Egypt shall be gathered at the river, ask, then let's start. We should have started 15 minutes ago, let's start. Good morning and happy Sabbath everyone. It's very nice to see you all here in God's sanctuary. Uh, to begin our song service, we'll sing Shall We Gather at the River 432.
morning and blessed sabbath to everyone through thoughtful intention and design god made women to be tender and nurturing it is through building one another up that women have the beautiful opportunity to bless those around them as well as generations to come with this thought i welcome you all for this sabbath school in order to start our sabbath school let us all rise and sing song number 92 this is my father's soul as our opening song let's all rise as we sing our opening song things so lord thank you for giving us this bright sabbath day in our lives so lord we come to thy feet with gratitude for giving us life so oh lord at this time as the women of the church are taking part in this sabbath activity so lord may you pour out the holy spirit and enrich each one of us so oh lord bless the women very specially and bless their families so oh lord O oh Lord as we are all serving thee O oh Lord fill us with your spirit help us that we may all actively serve thee and fulfill thine will O oh Lord as i ask this few words in Christ's name amen Good morning and happy sabbath okay so this week's mission report is entitled a reason to live do you have a reason to live yes no maybe okay we will listen to this story and you can think about the question do you have a reason to live or not and this week the this quarters mission report is coming to us from southern africa indian ocean division okay you can uh, while sunny puts up the ppt i'll just go through some of the facts so <coughs> the story comes to us from this division and one uh, from one of the country it is angola 
and uh, one fact about it was it was covered with dense forest previously but now it is covered with savanna and it has various kinds of grasslands and trees so there is a lot of possibility for fires and which was which is natural or man made and they have a national tree which is called a giant tree all right so the story is told about grasa he he was a christian he was born and raised as a christian but he never liked to go to church or attend any of the religious uh, meetings though his parents forced him he just used to come sit at the back and go away and he didn't really wanted to get baptized so during his pre teen he fell in love with rock music and uh, he started copying their clothing their lifestyle and he was very fascinated with the satanic symbols so he had so many tattoos on his body then his best friend was a goth and he uh, adopted the gothic lifestyle he started wearing black clothes he painted his nails black and his friend also loved music so both of them uh, had pictures in their rooms and they used to meet for jam sessions and play music and listen to all kinds of uh, satanic uh, i mean lis listen i mean have all the types of tattoos on their hands then soon they got adapted to alcohol and marijuana and then he adopted atheism and started to tell people that jesus is myth and he in the same time he uh, got acquainted with a person who made a pact with satan saying that he has given his soul to satan so that he can get uh, success in music so grasa also thought this is a very good idea let me give my soul to satan so that i'll get success in music but there was a twist in his life his mother died and his father was an alcoholic and he started drinking more and being the eldest of the family of four boys he had a lot of responsibility then uh, uh, while he was going through all this he told to himself that okay i'm going to stop uh, smoking and drinking and let me just pray to god so while he started to pray to god he met a girl and she introduced him to seventh day adventist church and then they both went to sabbath services they went to all the meetings that the church had but unfortunately he had to break up and then immediately he reconnected with his old habits he started drinking he started uh, alcohol i mean marijuana he started to get back to his music scenes but he was not really happy uh, and now he started to think that his life was meaningless and aimless and he every night he used to be so high and uh, he used to sleep at the same time and cry and his life was very unstable then he met uh, another girl who came in contact with the, who i mean who brought grasa in contact to his cousin who finished his degree in psychology then that cousin while he was studying psychology he became an adventist so he started giving counseling and also introduced him to god and explained him that grasa has to give his life to god alone and have to build his life on god so that problem was resolved now now grasa started to pray every day he used to pray so that before any kind of big decision that he was going to make he used to pray and he started healthy habits healthy diet habits and uh, he says that i found a reason for life when he started praying to god then remembering his old girlfriend he thought okay let me go back to seventh day adventist church and see how it feels again so he went back and as soon as he uh, entered the church he wanted to get baptized so he immediately enrolled himself to the baptismal classes and this time he wanted to really learn about god and to know uh, yeah and to know his plan of salvation for him so this time this was a really a change in his grasa's life the reality of jesus love for him has only increased 
and he gave his heart to God and got baptized. So he says, uh, there's a quote where he says that, today I can say that I can finally, I'm free. I live one day after another, savoring true peace and incredible joy. I finally have a purpose and responsibility in life to bring souls to our Savior and Creator. I once used my influence to lead souls to hell, but today I use it to Christ, with Christ's help to lead souls to heaven. So he is requesting all of us to give a 13th Sabbath offering a part of the 13th Sabbath offering will go in construction of Seventh-day Adventist school in his hometown. Thank you. Thank you, Swarupa, for the wonderful mission report. Once again, I want to wish each one of you a very happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Today, the World Church is celebrating Women Emphasis Day. And women are considered as the powerful creatures on the earth. But today in the church, there are more women but the response is not loud enough. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Uh, we are happy to have few guests amongst us. I can see uh, Pastor Wilbert, uh, Pastor Alexander, and uh, Pastor uh, George. So we want to welcome you for the Sabbath school. As you all are aware that this weekend services are taken by the women of our church, not only in Hyderabad Church, but throughout the general conference. And the same message will be shared throughout the world. And uh, last night, we have heard a wonderful message uh, by Ms. Pallavi about the fear of God. And this is a continuation of uh, it is a continuation message where we have the uh, message in three parts. First part will be shared in the Vespers, the second part in the Sabbath school, and the third and the final part will be the sermon for today. So I thank the Lord for the privilege that he has given to me to share this uh, presentation with all of us. And my presentation is titled, How Can We Develop the Fear of God? Last night we have seen what is the fear of the Lord and today we will learn about how we can develop the fear of the Lord. Here they have given us four simple steps where we can follow and uh, these simple steps will help us to develop the fear of the Lord. Now that we are acquainted with the meaning of the fear of the Lord from last night's message and what are the benefits of having the fear of the Lord, Today, we will see how we can develop the fear of the Lord and what benefits can we uh, get from these uh, four steps. So individually or collectively as women of this church or the society or community, uh, God says that we need to develop the fear of God in our lives so that we can be a model to the other women in the society. And uh, as it is mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Christ has called us to be his witnesses to all the world. Christ has called us to be his witnesses to all the world. And that is the reason why we need to be as models, reflecting the character of God, the fear of the Lord, and the love of Christ. So when we develop this uh, fear of the Lord, how does it benefit? We will look at it uh, later on, but first we will look at the four simple steps. I will be very brief because we have two activities to be performed. So uh, the first uh, step that we need to follow to develop the fear of God is seek God daily through the Holy Scriptures and the spirit of prophecy. Last night we have uh, come to know that 
uh, to know God is to love and fear him. So the Bible is the one and only true uh, revealer of God. And if we daily, if we spend enough of time reading the word of God, searching the scriptures, that will really help us to uh, know the character of God and how, we, how God is revealed in the Holy Scriptures. And in Psalms 119, chapter 11, the psalmist writes, Your word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. So if we can keep God's word in our heart, or if we store God's word in our hearts, our minds will be filled with the principles of God, and gradually the word of God will cleanse our soul from within, which will help us to keep God's everlasting principles and have the fear of God. And it will also help us to replace our sinful uh, habits and uh, make us a better person. When God's word is in our hearts, we will be humble, we will be polite, we will be forgiving, we will be kind and reflecting God's love. Along with God's word, another wonderful uh, gift that God has given us is the spirit of prophecy. This spirit of prophecy will help us to understand the Holy Scriptures in a better way. So if we can uh, maintain the balance of reading the Holy Scriptures and also the spirit of prophecy, it will help us to understand the hidden truths in the Bible and it will bring us abundant blessings upon each one of us. So this is the first step. Seek God daily through the Holy Scriptures and the spirit of prophecy. The second one is earnest prayer for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Most of us have the habit of reading the Bible and even the spirit of prophecy, but if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our lives, that is of no use because the Holy Spirit is the one which helps us to uh, understand the word of God. The Holy Spirit guides us and leads us. And as long as the Spirit dwells in our lives, it will be easy for us to overcome sin. Because as human beings, it is our human nature uh, that we don't naturally possess the fear of God. And we ourselves cannot uh, inculcate this uh, character. Only the Holy Spirit can help us to have the fear of God. In uh, John 14, verses 16 to 18, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Uh, these were the words uh, when Christ was ascending to heaven, he promised us to uh, give us a comforter, because the disciples were very sad that Christ was leaving. So that was the time when Christ promised each one of us that he would uh, give us the com comforter so that we will never be left alone. Okay, the third point, close the door of the heart against evil. Close the door of the heart against evil. So once we read the Bible, the, the spirit of prophecy and uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the next step is we intentionally have to close the door of the heart against evil. Uh, as we daily study the Bible and uh, read the spirit of prophecy and ask earnestly for the Holy Spirit, uh, we have to consciously close the door of our hearts against evil. By doing this, it will help us to uh, run away from uh, or turn away from anything that will feed our human nature against God's holy principles. And uh, we must, to have this kind of character, we must keep away all those things which will drive us away from Christ, be it uh, worldly books, the social media, or whatever you can uh, name it. So if we can consciously and willingly keep these things away from our lives, it will help us to uh, have the, I mean, it will help us to develop the fear of the Lord in our lives. And we must make a firm decision in our lives that we will not entertain anything that will 
take us away from the love of Christ. And uh, the last and the important thing uh, that we can follow to develop the fear of the Lord is <clears throat> be a witness, being a witness for the Lord. The fear of the Lord requires all human beings to love others as Christ loved us. And as we uh, share the love of God, as we share the word of God with others, uh, that is the best way we can be witnesses for the Lord. It can be in any uh, form uh, possible for us, like we can um, share the love of God through our finances, through our services, through our prayers, through offering uh, Bible studies, by visiting the needy and the sick, and by inviting uh, the sinners to the sanctuary of God. So if we can testify to the world that we love and fear God, that would be the best service that we can do for Christ. And uh, our deeds are the only witness to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is working in us, it will show through our deeds, the way we behave with others, the attitude of our lives will reflect that whether we are filled with the Holy Spirit or not. And it is important to develop a life of witnessing to others about the love of God that has created us the fear of God and which gives all of us a hope of eternal life. So these are the four things. The first one is read the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Then we need to earnestly pray for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And then the third point is consciously, consciously we need to Close the door of our hearts against evil. And the last point is be a witness. So if we can remember these four simple steps, it will definitely help us to develop the fear of the Lord. And once we have the fear of the Lord, as it is mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to be wise creatures in these last days. So let us all uh, pray for... Uh, each one of us to have the fear of God within us so that we can be wise and uh, wait for the second coming of Christ. So the two activities, the first one is we will take one minute of time and we will pray individually for ourselves. We often pray for others, for our family and for our friends, but now we will take one minute time and we will pray individually for ourselves and ask God to create the fear of God in us and also help us to follow these four simple steps that we have learned right now. So I will give you one minute. I wish I could give you more time since the time is running out. So let's take one minute. And after that, we have one more activity and then we will close.
Amen. Thank you so much. And for the last activity, we have prepared few few slips here with all the names of the women present in the church right now. I am very sure that I did not miss out anyone. Just in case, if any of you doesn't get a slip, please let us know. This is specially for the women and we have written all the names of the women on the slips. So I will ask Anusha to pass on the slips. Please mix the slips thoroughly. Uh, you have to pick one slip and the name that you get in the slip, you have to pray for that particular person for at least one month. For at least one month. If you like to pray more than that, you are most welcome to do. But minimum of one month, you have to pray for that person. If it is your wish, if you would like to uh, reveal the name that you uh, received, if you don't want to reveal also, that's okay. So you can pray for that particular person so that uh, the Lord will answer your prayer for them through your sincere prayers. So I hope the Lord will bless each one of us as we learn to develop the fear of the Lord and as we encourage and pray for each other as we witness for the loving Lord. Thank you. At this time, let's all rise up for the closing uh, prayer and I will request Miss Dahlia to offer the prayer. Let us pray. A kind and merciful Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God of our forefathers, God who made the heavens and the earth by just a word, you spoke and it stood fast. Dear Lord, in your word you have given us many promises. You always said, call unto me and I will answer you. Fear not for I am with you. I am your God. Dear Jesus, every Sabbath is a reminder of our relationship with you, dear Lord, that you are our Father, we are your children. We can come to your throne of grace and cry out to you saying, Father, hear our prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you, Lord, for the special program on this Sabbath. We pray for all the women of the church. We ask thee that you would bless them in a very special way. Be with the entire church as a whole. And dear Lord, as we participate and learn more about thee in the following services, we ask thee that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on each one of us and that you will give us receptive hearts to receive your word gladly. And as we have learned, your Lord, since last night, about what it is to fear the Lord and how to develop the fear of God, help us, dear Jesus, to be drawn more closer to you and teach us to fear you and to honor and glorify thee. Be with all the participants of today's program. Bless them and use them for your honor and glory. Be with the ones who are yet to come and be with the poor, sick, and the needy ones too. Thank you, dear Jesus, for this beautiful Sabbath once again. Hear our prayer, dear Lord, and bless each one of us. For I ask these blessings in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. On behalf of the uh, Sabbath School Department, I'd like to thank Dahlia, Sony, and Anusha for the song service, and uh, Mrs. Ratna Matthew for the welcome that she has given. I also uh, thank her for the opening prayer, and Dahlia for the closing prayer. Uh, I thank uh, Swarupa for the mission report, and Ruby Chinaya for the 
uh, feature talk that was given and that is about how to develop fear of the Lord which is a continuation of uh, yesterday evening. So it's a great blessing that we uh, came to know how we have to develop the fear of the Lord. Uh, so, uh, before we could uh, disperse for our classes, I'd like to inform each and every one of you that next week is the 12th week of the second quarter and we'll be having the birthday program for those who are celebrating your birthdays in the month of April, May and June. So, kindly give me your names, whose, uh, whose birthdays are there in these three months, April, May and June. and Please be there next week uh, here because from on behalf of the uh, Sabbath School Department, we're going to give you some gifts. Please come and please be blessed and please participate in our joy as well. Now let us disperse for our classes. The adult class will be taken by Mrs. Priscilla and Mrs. Sheba. Youth class will be taken by Mr. Johnny Tyagraj. Teens by Mr. Srujan and children's class by Mrs. Saranya Amudan. I request all the teachers to please wind up your classes by 10.40. I know it is a very short time, but please wind up your classes by 10.40 because we have a long program ahead. Thank you. God bless you. As we begin our Sabbath school lesson, let's ask God to fill up the gaps of human knowledge with divine knowledge. Let us pray. Great God, our creator, our redeemer, and our friend, you saw the need for us to know about Joseph today. I often think you have planned the lessons for us right in heaven. But you are there now with us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. As we teach, as we learn, as we listen, may we walk the path of truth and righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I have taken this Bible lessons before and two occasions and this is my third time and I'm happy to do it because I, I really love to do it. And I do spend a lot of time because I really think there's so much of excitement in this whole uh, Bible, especially in the Old Testament. And so today we are looking at the master of dreams. Is there a difference between a dream and a vision? If so, what is the difference? What is a dream? A dream is what you see when you are asleep. And a vision is you could have it even when you are awake. Okay, that's one uh, uh, explanation. Anything else? You know, dreams just fly away. You wake up in the morning, you've forgotten. Sometimes you don't. If they are bad dreams, you remember. 
and uh, our vision is something deeper. And very often, visions could be premonitions of the future. We have a whole lot of premonitions for the future today from Mrs. White. And so there is a clear-cut distinction between a dream and a vision. And so we move on now to the lesson, actually. Jacob looked at Joseph and he saw in him a son. The brothers looked at Joseph, and they saw in him a useless dreamer. The travelers looked at Joseph, and they saw a slave. Potiphar looked at Joseph and found a fine servant. Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and found a future boyfriend. <laughs> and then the prison officers, they saw in Joseph a prisoner of calm. How wrong they all were. God saw in Joseph the making of a prime minister in Egypt. How does God see us today? As leaders of the church, as members of the church, how and what does he see and anticipate that we can become with his sustaining and longing presence for you and for me. If we only understand the fire in Christ's heart for you and for me, if we can only understand the tears he sheds when we sin against him, if we could just look at it on the cross of Calvary, the beautiful feature talk, God's Holy Spirit, will come into us. And so, here we are. Joseph survives crime, he survives deception, he survives violence, but each time he is in a difficult situation, God uses that difficult situation to make him a greater person. God uses difficult situations to make us greater people. Is that a hope? Do we complain when we go through difficulty? Okay, and so through Joseph, God was going to bless all the nations of the earth. And in this lesson on Sunday, we come across uh, Joseph among his brothers, actually. He has to be there. And perhaps their ways of life are not really something that appealed to the 17-year-old. Maybe they cracked jokes that were not really acceptable. Maybe they cracked jokes, jokes about war, about sex, about women, uh, about different tribes, and you know, all kinds of things. And this young boy at 17, he carries these reports to his father. Whether he carried them the way he heard them, whether he added a little, took away a little, we don't know. But he did it. And so, we find now, the father probably chided them, we don't know that as well. Jacob settles in Canaan. While we try to understand the troubled relationships in the family of Joseph, it is not the family of Joseph, it is the church. There is no church, it's Joseph, uh, I'm sorry, Jacob. Jacob's family is the church. If you know of any other church at that time, tell me. 
Jacob's family is the household of God. And in that household, God, for that household, makes two promises. The household of the church, of the church of God, two promises. The first one, the question. God makes a promise. Does he keep his promises? Does God keep his promises? He makes promises to the household of Jacob. Does he keep his promises? What do you say? Yes? No? Yes? Is it conditional? Unconditional? See the questions that come up in our relationship with God. Okay, and then what of Abraham? Did he make a, make a promise to Abraham? Yes. Did Abraham see the promise? No. The promise was fulfilled. Nevertheless, Abraham will meet Jesus in heaven and he will say, what happened to your promise? Jesus will say, ask those who are around you. They are the answer to my promise to you, Abraham. How beautiful a thought. Amazing God. And then, does God turn evil into good? Now, that's the second statement. The first one, God makes promises. The second one, God turns evil into good. True? False? God turns evil into good. T or F? <laughs> you know, he does. He does. If he didn't, you and I will not be here today. Come on. God turns evil into good. We are all evil. If we are sitting in this church today, it's God who turned evil into good. What a God we have. What a God we worship. And then, now we come to Joseph. I'll ask Pastor Barbara to read uh, Genesis 37, 1 to 4. Genesis 37, 1 to 4. Can you hear at the back? No? Okay. One to four. I think that's it. Yeah, finish. Yeah. Yeah, so we are looking at Joseph now, young, 17 years. The father now goes and gives him a coat of many colors. We look at matching. I don't know how much of matching there was in that little coat, but anyway, it was a gorgeous coat. And you know, 17-year-old, imagine if we are 17-year-olds in this fabulous dress unknown to humanity at that time, how would we be? Up and down, in and out, flaunting our dress. Come on, look at me. I'm the one. Joseph, 17-year-old, felt very special in that dress. 
he was special to God and to man. And then, but naturally, the sons of Jacob didn't accept it. Whenever Jacob looked at Joseph, there was a special light in his eye. And the other son said, hey, why not we have that light as well? But it never came. It never happened. There was a special light for Joseph in the father's eye. God has a special light for you in his eye. Look out. that he gives you that special, beautiful look that makes you beautiful. And so, but the brothers, they didn't get it. They wanted it, they didn't get it. And at this point now, to add fuel to fire, the coat of many colors, the coat is a gift of royalty. A prince has to wear it. Now secretly, the father thought, okay, my son is going to be a ruler someday over his brothers. And so the coat was given. And the coat was worn by Tamar, as we read in 2 Samuel. Uh, it was usually given to a princess, a virgin princess, and Tamar wore this beautiful a coat of many colors. I'm sure that caused her problems with Amnon, anyway. And so in the meantime, the coat was brutal favoritism. And then it became a death shroud. The coat became a death shroud. Every time it was worn by Joseph, the brothers said in their hearts, kill him. Kill him, finish him, kill him. The gift of the father became a burial pattern in Joseph's life. And then, get rid of Joseph, yes. Joseph in the meantime enjoyed himself and the brothers wouldn't say even shalom to him. The brothers were not angry with the father that's the guy who caused the problem. It's not the brothers who, I mean, it's not Joseph, poor guy. The father committed the problem and the son suffered for it. And then it happens. Joseph, 17 year old, given dreams by none other than Jesus himself. What is a dream? Not just one dream, one dream after another. I was wondering whether there was any time gap between one dream, dream and the next. One dream appears in chapter 38, the next dream in 39. Whether there's a time gap, I don't know. So the first dream, you know, they lived in an agricultural society. And so the dream, the way God is, I really, I can't understand him really. You know, he gives a dream that goes with that society. So I think what kind of dream he'll give us today, I don't know. Maybe with computers and, you know, all these hearing aids and I don't know what, these big masks and masks around our mouth and everything, whether that's the dream, kind of dream we will get, I don't know. But here God gives a dream going with the culture of that time. We don't even have culture today. So. It's a, it's a problem for God, I'm sure. And then, so what happens now? This is a dream. The sheaves, the brothers gather all the sheaves, that's their food, they bundle it up, they put it on straight, probably like logs of wood, they are standing. And then Joseph sees this wonderful dream. All the sheaves come and they bow before the sheaf of Joseph. Come on. Seniority, culture, all gone. In God's eyes, it did not matter. Fantastic God. And so these, you know, 11 sheaves bowing, and Joseph, he's 17 year old. <laughs> he goes and tells his brothers, hey, guys, this is what I dreamt. 
How do you think the brothers felt? Already they are so upset with the coat, and now the sheaves. And then, basic food. The sheaves represented basic food for the family of Jacob. Now, sometime in the future, the whole family will depend upon Joseph for food. The prophetic vision will be fulfilled. Amazing God, I tell you. And then, could he have kept the dreams to himself? Uh-huh, 17 year old, no way. My 17 years, I was up and bubbly all, all over the place. I couldn't have kept anything to myself. And so, you know, <laughs> that's a time when life is so beautiful and you look beautiful. You're moving from, you know, childhood to adulthood and you're looking your best. 17 years is a time you develop the best in life. You're already in college with different ideas, beautiful friends, beautiful dress and all of that kind of life. That is Joseph. So he couldn't keep the dreams to himself, he told the brothers. Then comes a second dream. Boy, this one is shaking up. What happens here? The sun, the moon, and the stars. Eleven stars. Look at the scene in heaven. Huh? God moves the whole of heaven. Oh, he puts the sun there, he puts the moon there. He says, hey, you eleven stars, you line up here. And they are all bowing to Joseph. Now, whether Joseph was a bigger star or whether he was a man, the dream doesn't tell us. And then, okay, 11 stars. Jacob, his wife, the brothers, all of them bowing to Joseph. But Rachel was already dead. Then why the dream? With the perfect number of Jacob's family, because had Rachel been alive, she too would have bowed to Joseph. Amazing God. Really. And then, the problem with the dream. What was wrong with the dream? Okay, Joseph, you had a dream. Come on, go enjoy yourself, man. We are not bothered. Come on. You get lost. No. Dreams had spiritual superiority. And that's what bothered the brothers. Whatever Joseph dreamed had spiritual superiority. It came from God. And they worried it was going to affect them negatively. And so we move on. You know, Mrs. White, she had visions as well. She was afraid of this spiritual superiority. She was nervous about it. Sometimes when I'm asked to take a lesson, I am nervous. I don't feel very much free to do it. Mrs. White said, I am the lesser light. Spiritual superiority can kill us. And God gifted that to Joseph. And then we move on to Monday's lesson. Now the brothers, they can't keep quiet, attack on Joseph. In a way, you can understand the brothers feeling bad. I mean, everything Joseph, 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 imagine how the others felt. Imagine in your family, if it's only Doreen, 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 Doreen everywhere, what about the others? <laughs> Do they, don't, <laughs> don't they exist at all? You know, even in the church, you know, if it's only one person everywhere, 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 now the others, they're not going to keep quiet. And so jealousy led to envy, envy to violence. What was the ultimate kill? Kill him, kill him. This was ringing in their mind. Kill him, kill him, kill him. The house of God, remember. The church of God. Kill him. And then we go on. They were not angry with Joseph. And then Joseph says, okay, 
come on, uh, Jacob says, come on, Joseph, can you do me a favor? Take this food to your brothers in Shechem. So he says, okay, dad, carries the food to the brothers in Shechem, and he puts on his coat of many colors. He goes to them, they recognize him only by the coat. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Crescendo. Then he comes, brings the food, gives it to them. They are ready now, what to do with him? Okay, they probably had three plans. First one, slay him, brutal. But they are used to slaying people. They slayed all of the Shechem people once. The brothers had no convictions, no, you know, power, as she said this uh, morning in the feature talk. There was no Holy Spirit in there. And so then, okay, how to kill him, what to do, how to go about it was the problem. So the first thing they said, slay him. Reuben says, shed no blood. You remember what the Jews said when Christ hung, hung on the cross? What did they say? His blood be upon us and on our children. If you go to the Tel Aviv Museum in Jerusalem, you'll be shocked to see the picture of these children buried one on top of another in a huge pit. One on top of another. The little socks, the little bits of their furniture is all stuck on the side. What a painful scene. But they asked for it. His blood be on us. Why didn't you stop there? You went on to say, and on our children, go and look at the condition they were in, in the Tel Aviv Museum. I felt nausea when I saw it. So painful. Why? God keeps his promise. You asked for it, I give you. And then, it's over. That was the first thing. Reuben says, don't shed blood. And then Judah, like the Judas of Jesus' time, says, hey, come on, let's sell him. Sell him and we'll make some quick buck, okay? We can enjoy that money. That's the second suggestion. Third one, throw him into the pit and be done with it. No water in the pit. Remember, Jacob went because there was no water during the famine, went to Egypt, to Joseph. Now Joseph has no water, he's in the pit. He's screaming, he's crying, he's pleading, come on. What, what have I done? Take me out. The brothers, the more he screamed, the more they laughed. They were enjoying their food. Joseph in the pit. Remember, Jesus was in the pit. If you read Psalms 40 and verse 2, you will see what Jesus, what the psalmist says, words that echoed the thoughts of Jesus, he brought me out also out of a horrible pit and established my goings. Joseph and Jesus, thrown into the pit. Okay, and then what happens? Now let's continue with the story. So Reuben is the only one whom the brothers hear, but they don't do anything. But Judah says, throw him into the pit. The brothers heard and they were willing to do it. Okay, Judah's words, he says, he is our brother, please come on. He's our flesh, let him be in the pit. Someday, Reuben planned to come and take Joseph out and return him to Jacob. So Reuben left. And then, okay, who comes along now? God comes along. What's he doing? Jesus is driving the caravan. Come on, faster, faster, faster. I have to get to that pit. Remember Jesus ran for the Shunammite woman? 
woman of Samaria, not Shunammite, sorry, woman of Samaria, he ran in the heat of the day to get to her on time. Here the caravan is moving. I'm sure the angels were pushing the caravan along. They cannot miss the timing. God is so wonderful. Amazing God. Timing. And then the caravan comes. They lifted their eyes and looked. They lifted their eyes and looked. Do we lift our eyes and look? When we pray, it's good we bow our heads, yes. But there are times when you should lift your eyes and look unto God. And so, the caravan comes. What happens now? Sell Joseph, 20 pieces of silver. Jesus sold for 30 pieces of silver. God planned that. Hey, hey, don't get equal to Jesus, okay? <laughs> you know, not for God's sake, but for our sake. So we know the difference. Okay, and then, Joseph and Jesus. What a depth of connections of a man to God. Friends, we don't know how close planet Earth is to God today. Very close, he's coming. He's getting closer and closer to heaven. God has no other problem, no other obsession, no other work. Sometimes I sit back and say, God, don't you have any other work? No. His only work, his only focus is planet Earth. Who is in planet Earth? You and I. What a God we have. He's looking at every one of us individually. Sometimes it's frightening. As if he's blowing down my neck, you know. Saying, <laughs> Jesus, you're right behind me, oh boy. That's the last thing we want sometimes. Okay. And then, uh, now Reuben comes back. Joseph is missing. Reuben rents his clothes. Caiaphas rent his clothes. Jacob rent his clothes. Jesus was stripped of his clothes. Joseph was stripped of his clothes. Stripping and rent. Renting you do, stripping somebody else does. And Jesus hung on the cross. Don't believe the pictures you see. Jesus hung on the cross naked. For you and for me. Can you ever doubt the love? He hung naked. The pictures you see are just for your sake and my sake. It is not the original at all. There were no cameras in those days. Anyway now, Joseph is missing and what do the brothers do now? Hey, hey, what do we go and tell our dad? Kill a goat, come on. Substitute. Jesus is our substitute. The coat now is killed and the coat, bits of the coat, put in that blood, taken to the father and saying, hey, look at this. Father, look at this. Can you tell us whose coat this is? Is this your son's coat? Oh, come on, Jacob. How did he feel? Looking at the coat, he wept. Bitterly, he rent his garments. The light from Jacob's eyes went away forever. No light for the brothers. And the brothers lost the light of Jacob's eye and they lost their brother. And then what happens? Yes, Joseph is sold. The caravan is moving. The angels are taking them straight to Egypt. Potiphar's house, get off Joseph, get in, go there, that's where you're going to be. So Joseph goes into Potiphar's house. 
And then we need to know something here. Bad traits of character of the 11 brothers, you and I have them. We need to analyze our character. When we find these characteristics of these 11 brothers in us, you nip them in the bud. Otherwise, they will overtake you. You become so immune to your own wickedness, you don't realize that it is sin. And we need to be so careful from what happens. And now we go on to Tuesday, Judah and Tamar. I don't know why this story is here, Judah and Tamar. Well, Judah is there, and so Tamar appears. I don't know who Tamar is, what her ancestry is. I tried to ask, I tried to Google, nothing. It's like Melchizedek. Tamar suddenly appears on the scene. All we know is that she's a Canaanite woman, nothing else. And then look, this Canaanite woman, God says you will appear in the genealogy of my son. Come on, God, where are we? We have no place in any genealogy belonging to the New Testament. Is the Old Testament what we read about the genealogy of Christ up to the time he was? Okay, and so now, Judah and Tamar, Tamar promise, uh, Tamar marries a Canaanite woman and has three sons. One is called Er, the other is called Onan, and the third one is called Shelah. And so Ta Ta Tamar comes to Jacob, Judah is there, and Judah says, Judah marries a Canaanite woman and he has three sons, Er, Onan, and Shelah. And so he tells Tamar, okay, you marry the first son. Fine, Tamar means, I know the meaning of Tamar is palm tree. I don't know the significance, but Tamar means palm tree. So if you want to name your child Tamar, you can know the meaning is palm tree. It's a good name, even though <laughs> the, the history is bad, but she ends up in Jesus' uh, genealogy. So. And then, okay, so she marries uh, the first one, uh, who is heir. He dies. He does not die. God kills him because he's so wicked. My question is, does God kill? And then, the first one goes. Heir is gone. She marries the second one, that is Onan. He too is killed by God. Can we use the word, we killed Jesus? No, we don't. Nobody says that. We say we, he, was, he was crucified. We didn't crucify him, did we? We don't crucify him, right? He was crucified, not you. You didn't crucify, I didn't crucify. He was crucified. Right? <laughs> this is the way we are today. Yet God killed both the brothers. Now the third one is Shela. He's still very young, younger than Tamar, but Jake, uh, Judah says, okay, you will marry Shela, but he does not keep his word. What does Tamar do? I'll show him. I'll show him now. What does she do? dresses up like a prostitute, goes and sits down, and then Judah is captured. She takes the signet, she takes the cord and the staff. And then what happens after that? Judah doesn't keep his promise, but then she comes out with all her booty. In the presence of everybody, she says to Judah, can you recognize this? Can you discern this? She doesn't use the word recognize. Can you discern this? You were the one with whom I am pregnant today. 
and Judah says, you are more righteous than me. The house of God, less righteous than the Canaanite woman. And so that's coming to almost the end of the story. And uh, Tamar now, she just uh, collects the, uh, has these uh, emblems from Judah. I don't know whether she returned it to him or not. I don't know. Anyway, the point now is we need to remember at the foot of the cross, the ground is level. At the foot of the cross, the ground is level. You are Tamar. I am Tamar. You are Judah. I am Judah. Whatever they were, we are today. At the foot of the cross, the ground is level. What is our response? What is our response? Yes, God made the promise. He kept his promise. God turned evil into good. He did it. And so, for us too, even though we are like the 11 brothers, God turned evil into good for them. He will turn evil into good for you and for me. And so I close with this. I thank Dr. Ka for keeping me, reminding me about the time. Thank you so much for this opportunity uh, where I feel touched myself having shared this message with you today. Thank you very much. That brings us to the, good morning, happy Sabbath to everyone. Uh, that brings us to the Wednesday's lesson where we learn that uh, Joseph is in Egypt and he's uh, living as a slave. And almost immediately Joseph um, succeeds in everything he sets his heart and hand at. And the people that are surrounding or living with Joseph understand the blessing that comes with his service. Um, and Joseph is progressive for his master's house. And in this process, we know the story that happens and due to which he ends up in the prison. Now, Joseph is a slave in Egypt, ends up in the prison with no scope of escape from prison. Moves on to Thursday's lesson and um, he inter interprets the dream of the butcher and the butler, the baker and the butler. And we also know the story, what happens uh, with the dreams. Two years, the, the baker, the butler promises that he would restore Joseph or help him out of the prison, but he doesn't do anything like that. And one fine morning, the pharaoh is disturbed because he had a dream. And we all are aware of how Joseph was recommended, he was brought to the presence of the Pharaoh and Joseph interrupts, interprets the dream of the Pharaoh and the story is history. Now what we need to understand out of Thursday's lesson is that how does God pick us out of the worst situations that can happen to us? Can anything good come from the worst? The answer to that is yes. We may not understand it today, but eventually God has his best plan at hand. Moving on to the Friday's lesson, um, very early in life, both Joseph and Daniel were taken away from their homes. They were taken away from their homes. They were in their teenage. They were taken away from the God they worship, but these young men did not take themselves away from the God. They chose to follow God. They chose to acknowledge God in every single thing that they did. Similarly, we have the same choice in our lives today. God never chooses to withdraw himself away from his children, but we have a choice to follow him with our whole heart. And the choice is left to us 
to choose. Um, with this, I would like to close and request Dr. Kala to offer the closing prayer. If there's anyone for questions, I request Dr. Kala to come forward and offer the closing prayer. Thank you. Uh, let's stand for prayer. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you speak to us through your word and through your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you will bless all the members who listen to every word. We pray that your spirit will work on our hearts and minds so that we may learn the deep lessons you have for us in this a message that you have given us through Mrs. Priscilla Daniel and through Mrs. Sheba Ezra. Bless us as we enter the divine service. May your spirit continue to speak to our minds. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers because we ask in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, the Sabbath school uh, offering will be collected. Good morning and a happy Sabbath to each one of you. I'm very happy to see all of you and I welcome everyone. If there are some guests amongst us, I welcome you all also at this time. My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord. 
For there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. With these thoughts, I welcome each one of you. As you can see at the back, and uh, you know that this is a very special week, and today happens to be Women's Emphasis Day also. Here are some points, uh, weekly appointments. Here are some weekly appointments, and uh, they are the Pathfinders will meet tomorrow on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We have a Vespers on Friday evening at 7.15 p.m. And on Saturday, we have the Sabbath school. In the morning, it starts at 9.15 a.m. Followed by the Divine Service on the same day at 10.30 a.m. We also have another program in the afternoon and that is the AY Sundown Worship on Saturday at 5 p.m. So we encourage all the children, youth, adults and the senior citizens to take part in all these programs. This is the second wedding band of Robbie and Navia, which I need to read right now. We solicit your gracious presence with family and friends on the auspicious occasion of the holy matrimony of our son Robbie Vijay Kumar with Navya, daughter of Mrs. Swarna Chinta, late Mr. Keshav Rao, on th Thursday, 16 June 2022 at 10 a.m. It is to be solemnized by Pastor Christopher Pitta, and the venue is right here, Dan Harris Memorial, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Chapel Road, Abbots, Hyderabad, and lunch follows. Next week, there is going to be ordination of deacons, deaconesses, and elders. They will be done by Pastor Tyagraj, Pastor V. Baburao, and Pastor Chinaya. Next week, there is also a child dedication of the son of Dr. and Mrs. Sanjeev Anand. Right now, though we don't have any pastors, let us continue praying for it. And let us pray for Pastor Wilbert, who is the acting ECIU president, and Pastor Alexander, who is now the section president. Let us also pray now for the COVID-19 patients, monkeypox patients, and frontline workers. Let us pray for Jenny, Mr. Sukumar, Jasmine John, Ms. Atya Singh, and Manas. He met with an accident just a few days ago, and his, his condition is critical. Let us also pray for the divine service speaker and translator. Let us now stand up for the intercessory prayer and form groups of two and three and pray together. Let us please stand and pray right now. Thank you. Thank you.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, I'm Vasundar Rao. I have been part of this church from <laughs> past few months. Uh, I would like to share my Christian walk with this church. Uh, first, I have to start like in my childhood, there was this quiz competition where a question was asked, which book was the f most published book in the world? Everybody was shouting, it's Harry Potter. Because everybody were fantasized with all the spells and everything magic in, the, in this book. But the sad reality is nobody ever read Bible. And that's the reason they didn't know what, which book is published most in the world. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to share this verse. Uh, in Job chapter 5, the verse 9, he performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. Uh, in this, on the special day, I want to share the two important miracles which we, which I, which we, uh, sh which was shared with me with, from my family members. <laughs> the first miracle I want to share is when, we, when my grandmother, she didn't know how to read and write. She just know what her name is, and she just know how to write her name. But the only thing when she started, when somebody gave her a Bible to read, she started reading Bible. She doesn't know how she is able to do that. She, d she didn't have any proper education. She didn't do anything. That is what the biggest wonder which I had felt in my life that how God works. And there are many messages in this church that I listen about how, how, how like, God does miracles medically. But there's one biggest problem is like we don't know in this world when to seek medical help. So one, one of my aunt, she start, uh, when she started reading Bible, uh, uh, it's, it's a daily, daily, uh, daily thing, but when, one day when she, was do, uh, when, when she was starting reading Bible, she couldn't read. The words weren't coming from her mouth. She felt there was something happening to her. Immediately she went to the hospital and she, did, she had a problem with, of quieter and she had to be removed. It. She, ha she had to be uh, removed that of that. Uh, she needed uh, bad help for that. She needed to get operated. So when you just, you, it's not like uh, the help which we get by just reading Bible, the miracles which we see, just it's, it's the wonder of God that I have to share with you. And uh, the, uh, the church which earlier I used to go, there's any, hardly any message that, we, that I was able to listen. This is all cacophony of just people used to come talk about dresses or the carrier and all. Uh, in my family, we have everyone, most of my family members work in government. We have from uh, IS to constable, everyone are, are there in, only in government. I don't know, they're the, the big fan of uh, working for government. Since they feel that, uh, the thing is like you have to do service to the people. So there's this message which really hit hard and the biggest lesson which I, which I learned from this church is humanity is not something just where you go and help people. The thing is like you're not going, gonna seek glory for you. Whatever you do, the, uh, the glory should be to the God. That is the biggest lesson which I learned from this church. Whatever you do, wherever you are, whatever the person, whatever position you are in, the humanity or the service which you do should give glory to the God. That is the biggest lesson which I have learned. And, uh, and the other thing is like, uh, we, uh, we all, uh, my parents uh, go for, uh, they stay on length for a month for, uh, for uh, during, during this Easter thing. So even I started doing that this year. After that, later I learned when, when I was reading the doctrine, how the Ellen, Sister Ellen White gave this uh, law of doctrine, uh, the, the doctrine of foot, uh, of, uh, uh, so I was like, uh, when I was reading it, I was like, wh why, it's not, uh, I was searching logic in it. In the Bible, I was only uh, searching for a logic. Then after, through my personal experience, I understood it's not logic, it's a biblical thing which you only personal experience can know. How, when I forgo the meat, I didn't, understand, I didn't understand like how sinful that life is. It's only a personal experience which helped me understand how, how, this, how this works. So whenever we are reading Bible, it's, it's not only logic that we should search in it. This biblical thing, which only Holy Spirit, which guide us that we should know, which we would be knowing with our personal experience, I guess. And uh, in Sabbath keeping, there were many messages which I heard. I never miss AY service of Valor. 
So in the Sabbath keeping, I have to share one thing. One of my friend, he created a WhatsApp group. He added everyone in that group and he exited. So I ca called him and asked him, why did you create a group and, and you got exited? He said, next week is, um, is my birthday, so I thought you'll plan a surprise for us. So, so I think even God gave us a day, so we all would come together and do, and, and do, uh, and uh, do, uh, the, our thoughts and actions would direct towards God. So that is why it has uh, to give surprises to God, maybe be, being here and directing our actions to God rather than just simply, you know, making a day not just for resting or, or just having a, uh, a day to be set apart. It's a spiritual rest which, which only one could uh, understand after keeping Sabbath. I got convinced and that is what my message is. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. As uh, G uh, the woman at a well has encountered with Jesus and has gone to bring many souls to Christ, as we sing the song, may we remember we have to sow in the morning. We do not have time to rest and just uh, say we have time for the second coming. Uh, let's all join our voices and sing hymn number 369, Bringing in the Sheaves. 369. Sheep. 
Father. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the privilege you have granted to each one of us to gather here in thy sanctuary to worship thee and to praise unto thee, Lord. As we are going to learn some practical lessons from the heroines of the faithfulness, Lord, fill us with thy Holy Spirit. Grant us a receptible mind. Jesus, when you come on the clouds of heaven, Grant us a place in the eternal kingdom. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. A very happy Sabbath to each and every one of you, and also those who are watching on online and YouTube. This morning, for our scripture reading, the speaker has chosen two scriptures from different books, one from Acts and the other one from Exodus. First, let us read from Acts 5, 29. Please open your Bibles to Acts 5, 29. I'm reading from New International Version. Please open your Bibles to Acts 5, 29. Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We are to obey God rather than man. I'll read it again. Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We are to obey God rather than man. The other scripture is from Exodus, Exodus 1.17. Please open your Bibles to Exodus 1.17. But the midwives feared God and did not, as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. I'll read it again. But the midwives feared God and did not, 
as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. I'll read it in Telugu also. Apostle Karyamulu, Aidu, Erevet Tomidi Sadukandamandi. Apostle Karyamulu, Aidu, Erevet Tomidi. Anduku Petru, Petrunu, Apostolunu, Mansulaka Kadu, Devinke, Mem Lobadevalu Gada. Rendava Vachinamu, Nergma Kandamu, Wakati, Padihedu, Nergma Kandamu, Wakati Padihedu, Bible in the Chestarundi, Wakati Padihedu. Aite, a mantra sanulu, Devuniki Baipadi, Aigup to Raju, Tamakadnia Pinchinatu Cheka, Magapilalanu, Bratukani Yaga. May God bless the scriptures that was read, read, just read. Uh, to begin our divine service, let's all rise and join our voices by singing hymn number 70, 70, praise the Father, 70, 70. Let us pray. Those who can kneel down, I request, please kneel down for prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, glory, hallelujah. Dear Jesus, we come today seeking you, dear Lord, that you may be here as we worship you. Dear Lord, our hearts are not right. Our words, our thoughts, and our deeds are not correct. Thou knowest everything about each one of us. But still you have given us the privilege to come and worship you. And you have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you will be among us. Forgive us, dear Lord. Please remove the hatred, the pride, the anger, the jealousy, covetousness, greediness, gluttony from our lives and all those things that take away our time away from you, whether it's the internet or different types of things, dear Jesus. In this world, we are exposed to different things. We and our families and friends and extended families, we all fall a prey to it. We pray for a spiritual revival, dear Lord. We pray that you will create a clean heart in each one of us, 
so that we may be acceptable. We know, dear Lord, we are not going to be saved by ourselves, but it is you, dear Lord. You are the creator, the redeemer, the God who loves and forgives. You left the whole universe, the heavens, everything that you have created, and you came down to the sinful earth to save sinners like us. That whoever is born onto this planet, dear Lord, may is privileged to have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in you should not perish but have everlasting life. Dear Lord, I pray thee once again, create in us a clean heart, dear Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. Especially we pray for all of us who read your word and pray that our words, our study in the Bible may be right with you, dear Lord, that spiritually we may grow day by day. I also pray for those among us who have gone away with lies and fables and false theories and various things. Bring them back, dear Lord, to your heavenly throne, that they may know you as the creator, the redeemer, only in that is our purpose on this earth. Dear Lord, I pray also for the sick ones. The cry from them every day goes out to you, dear Jesus, the pain and suffering, especially those who are terminally ill, who are suffering with continuous body pains and various illnesses. We pray especially for Atiya Garu and also, dear Lord, for Ramya and Sujit and also, dear Lord, we pray for many others who are ailing from number of years, Mrs. Jasmine, Mr. Sukumar, Pastor Charles, and many of our friends, relatives who are known personally to us and whom we prayed now for. Dear Jesus, there are many requests, and even Violet was br brought to us yesterday, who came from Malawi, dear Jesus, we pray for her too, who left her country and came here for treatment. Dear Jesus, we pray that you bless the medical team as they take care of the sick people, that your hand of healing may be upon them, dear Jesus. We pray that you forgive us, dear Lord, so that the blessings may come upon them. At this time, we pray for all those in ministry, the pastors, the evangelists, the prayer warriors, the Bible workers, all those families who dedicate their life to your ministry. Bless them and deliver them from all sorts of trials and tribulations, dear Lord, especially, dear Lord, Satan's attacks, so that they may not be able to do your ministry. Help them on the way, dear Lord, that they may be overcomers, dear Lord, for each and every one bow down here. There is a trial and tribulation. There is a heaviness of heart. But you have the solution that whoever looks up to you Definitely you will not leave them, dear Jesus, because in your name you have promised a solution, dear Lord, that whoever believes in you should not perish but have everlasting life. Dear Lord, we pray for Mrs. Chinaya and the translator. Dear Lord, that the words may come from your heavenly throne, that it may be a spiritual revival for each one of us as we sit at your presence and hear your word. Yes, dear Lord, every week we come to your presence hoping and striving that our lives may change. We listen into the Zoom and we listen to various preachers, counselors. Dear Lord, we study our Bible, we read your word. Through each of these, we pray that your Holy Spirit will slowly change us, dear Jesus, because your coming is very soon, dear Lord, and we cannot deny that fact. We pray for us and our children and our church members, extended families, all those in ministry especially. Help us, dear Lord, to realize that your coming is very soon. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. Let's turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy 14th chapter, verse 23. Deuteronomy 14th chapter, verse 23. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. Tithing is a token of gratitude, obedience, and thanksgiving. With this thought, I would like to invite the deacons to take tithing's offering, during which we'll have a special song by Mrs. Meena and Shirisha.
Our most heavenly Father, thank you for giving this opportunity to praise thee and worship thee, Father. As we entered into the Sabbath, I was help us to keep the Sabbath holy. Father, bless this offering. Please use it for thy cause. I ask viewers in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Story time now. Boys and girls, children, would you come forward and occupy these chairs which are placed for you? <coughs> Happy Sabbath. Little louder. Happy Sabbath. Yes. What is. Yeah. Very good. Now, what is special about this day? Women's Emphasis Day. Women's Emphasis means what? Huh? It's very important. Women's ministry, women doing in the work. Girls and boys also are included. And men and women are also included here. Okay? And there is a small story for you. And you will like these stories. And one or two also I'll add if there is time. Now this is about a young girl. About her age maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know the name. Huh? But she is from a non-Christian family. They are not Christians. They are not Christians. And close to their house there was an Adventist church. So she was attending that church. She was attending Wednesday meetings. She was attending Vespers. She was attending Sabbath school. And she was loving Jesus very much. Parents came to know about it. You know what they said? If you go again to that church and worship in that church, we'll punish you. But still she went. And she got punishment. Every time she went, she was getting punished. She didn't bother about punishment. You know that? One day she came back from church 
and saw that all her clothes were outside the door, front door. And the door was locked. She cannot get inside. Her clothes are outside and the door was locked. So what she did, she went back to church. And there she told the church members, there were some church members in the church, this is what the situation is, this is what my parents did to me. They're not allowing, they don't want me to enter the house. Then they said, don't worry, we will take care of you. Whom she obeyed? She obeyed Jesus, exactly, she obeyed God. We heard in the memory text, no, we have to obey God, not people, parents or anybody or anything. We must obey Sabbath. We must keep the Sabbath only. We must not tell lies. So many commandments are there. Huh? We must fear God and obey Him. So what she did, she was happy. Of course, she, she no parents, no family, but God provided. Every time one family was keeping, okay? And then she finished her school. She wanted to go to the university. For university, there is money needed. Oh, she was praying. She was very, she f had faith in God. She was praying, what to do, Lord? I want to, advent, ad I want to attend Adventist University. So what she did, she went to the church, the women's ministry director, she told her her desire. Then they prayed together and she said, we have little money with us, but that will not be enough, but God will provide. Who will provide? God will provide. And she joined the university. And, all, and everybody said, we'll pray. We'll be praying for you. Okay? We'll be praying for you. She was completing her studies. Money she was getting to be, pay the fees. She finished the university studies. She became an, a graduate. And another nice thing happened. She married an Adventist pastor. Hmm? And then now, today, what she's doing, you know, this is a true story. She is the leader of West Central Africa Division, women's ministry leader. You know who is our leader of this church, women's ministry? You don't know? Dr. Kalanti, not me. Yes. Huh? So she helped and all the women helped. How sweet it is, how nice it is, no? how daring she is. She is. And another one, small story, I didn't think there is little time. Such a lady, such a girl, a young girl who was attending SDA church, her parents didn't like. Father said, if you go out of the house to attend the church, we will see. Sabbath came, she got ready to go. Father was ready, sitting near the door on the chair. He was having pistol in his pocket. Huh? And then... When, she, say, when he, she came to go out, she said, you put one step outside, I'm going to shoot you. Go inside. She didn't go inside. She was putting one step to go, to go out of the door. He took the pistol. He pointed at her. What happened, you know? His hand got paralyzed. You know what is the meaning of paralyzing? It, it stopped working. It, it just it was dead, the hand. It fell down. Pistol fell down. Hmm? How God does wonderfully? Yes, sometimes he does like that. Sometimes he gives help and the church members helped her. How good it is. Now you may ask, our parents are very good. They teach us everything. What can we do? How can we obey God? How can we please God? I saw a video. I was looking for some videos. I saw one with a little girl, like, like maybe that boy. Okay? There are some children there, the new, new girl and boy. Yes, children who came today to, to the church. Of that age, she was in the restaurant with her father and she had food in her plate. When they were entering the restaurant, she saw a beggar, old beggar sitting. Then she told her father, Daddy, I'll give my food to you. Okay, give, he said. She went, she held, the, she held the plate in her hand. The video, you can see it. Okay, 
she went and gave to the beggar and father was saying oh my little girl my little girl she is giving to the beggar she was so happy when the father is very happy how jesus will be happy more happy very happy you want smile on jesus face huh so you obey god okay obey the commandments do good to others okay what you have you share right children okay i want somebody to pray you pray that you all will obey okay who will be ready to pray they should come up and pray okay one boy and one girl i like but whoever it is it's okay and then pray for the women's ministry so that they will help whoever is in need two things you pray for okay children come on don't waste time yes 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 why why you feeling shy come and pray i want you to pray come on yes yes baby come come two one boy and one girl both of you come because you are all treasure to god god said children are my treasure whose treasure god's treasure right ha ah, come let's close it. stand children children stand when the prayer is offered Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings you have given us. Thank you for uh, keeping. Uh, thank you for helping us. Help us to love you. Thank you for the story that the that grandma has told us. Thank you for. thank you for leading us and guiding us help us to be true and loyal to you help us to share and help us to share ev- everything we have with others in jesus holy name we pray amen amen yes good good <coughs> let's pray Our my teacher and our father, we chat in heaven. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful Sabbath day that you have blessed us with. And now we have heard a wonderful story, Lord, that we should stand for you, whatever may uh, may be the problem or whatever may be the uh, um, anything, Lord. Uh, we should stand for you, Lord. Please, Lord, give us the strength uh, to stand for you, and. Uh, help us to be an example for others and then lord i uh, pray that uh, give us the heart to uh, share and care for others lord please lord uh, help us to give our listening ears to your holy spirit and whatever the holy spirit may say help us to listen lord give us the uh, uh, help us help us to open the heart for you lord and then lord i pray that you be with this women's ministry and help this ministry to be a blessing for many in the world lord be with us guide us and guard us help us to keep the rest of the sabbath day holy be with us throughout this new week until your second coming bless us guide us and guard us in jesus is precious name i pray amen oh. very good god bless you all children and also all the teenagers who are sitting over there you would have heard the story obey god at all time not people right to all the women who are seated in this church and also in the balcony to please come forward we are going to have a dedicatory prayer and i request pastor and chinaya to please come on to the stage too so that he can pray for us all the women of the church please step forward to the front
happy sabbath to each one of you happy sabbath thank you after all the women came forward all the benches are empty so this is a mighty army of the lord just now mr ramdam was telling me pastor no entrance into the pastor's room packed with all the ladies we are so glad not only packed with the church pastor room i used to say even heaven is going to be packed with the ladies only so wherever worship is there whether seventh day advent church or any other church women will be there majority is theirs their ministry is very essential to all the churches in our organization and we are so happy to have that all this uh, women of this church are celebrating women's emphasis day as they are celebrating women's emphasis day may the lord bless each one of them abundantly and i want to thank church ministry women's ministry director dr kala and all the associates and all uh, every one of uh, central church women behind her and uh, we are so glad to dedicate all of you to god's ministry i welcome each one of you to participate in dedicated the prayer shall we have a prayer let us close our heads o eternal god creator sustainer sovereign god giver of all special blessings in heaven we sincerely want to thank you for this special occasion that you have granted to hyderabad church this afternoon lord we are so happy to have all your servants as they have planned to worship you and bring glory and honor to your great name in heaven heavenly father i submit every women of this church for their dedication commitment to your ministry especially for this hyderabad central church i sincerely pray that thou would send thy special blessings upon all this women who are standing in your presence heavenly father bless them abundantly not only your blessings lord you accept their ministry their dedication in these last days as they are doing their services to this church and outreach programs lord may your special blessings shower upon them fill their hearts with your blessings heavenly father i pray thou would bless their families bless them abundantly so that through this uh, women services bless not only churches and their families to heavenly father this afternoon lord i take this privilege and honor to dedicate all these women to you for your services as they are continuing their uh, services to this church may your special blessings shower upon them lord so that they will be filled with joy and happiness to serve the lord 
I also pray that would bless everyone present here in your presence, Lord. Bless all of us too. As this uh, worship is continued to go on, Lord, may our Holy Spirit dwell among us. In your presence, we submit all of us, especially all these women, into your hands to bless them spiritually and physically, Heavenly Father. Bless their ministry abundantly. I also pray that would bless all the young people of this church at this time, Lord. Use them mightily for your great honor and glory. Bless all the children who are in your presence, Lord. Bless them with good health and strength, Lord. Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we want to thank you as these women are celebrating this special day through their uh, services, through their worship, may be always glory and honor to your name. We are preparing ourselves to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is going to come to this earth very soon, Lord. Not only we are uh, doing uh, ministry on this earth and witnessing for the Lord, may we have a special privilege to be with all these women and our families in heaven when Jesus come to this earth, Lord. Once again, Lord, I submit all of us, especially all these women of this church, not only women of this church, wherever uh, our Adventist women are celebrating this day, Lord, bless them abundantly, pour your blessings upon each of them, Lord. Continue to be with us throughout this divine service. I also pray that would bless the speaker of this hour, Mrs. Uma, and the translator, Mrs. Daya. Bless them abundantly. Bless everyone and help us to meet our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes second time to this earth, Lord. May we have a privilege to be with you eternity in eternity. We thank you once again all your blessings upon us. We pray all these mercies in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God continue to bless you, all the women of this church and your families. Thank you. As all the women remain standing here, we are going to sing a song, which is a very familiar one from the hymnal. Hymn number 304, Faith of Our Fathers Living Still.
Before I introduce the speaker for today, I want to thank all the ladies who encouraged me, supported me, and who took part in today's program. Some of you volunteered to help me. Some of you rearranged your schedule so you could help out in this program. Some of you could not come for this program or were not able to take part, but your kind words of encouragement and your prayers are much appreciated. I also want to especially thank the English choir members. I wanted to provide uh, lunch from the church for after fellowship lunch after the program, but uh, we did not want to put a burden on the church treasury. So I just asked them if they would support and I said, your wives don't have to cook on the special day, so please uh, donate some money. And within 10 minutes, we collected all the money we need for today's program. I thank and praise God for such uh, generous, loving, mostly young people who donated. And for the lunch, so we are having a special lunch provided by these generous members. Oh, I'm so, yes, most of them were men. I mean, they, they're the ones who wrote the amounts. Thank you so much. And uh, this week has been a blessed one for me. Like many of you, I have listened to the GC devotionals given by various God-fearing people. The first one I listened to was by Pastor Dwight Nelson. And in his message, he, he has been for 40 years, he has been the church pastor of uh, Andrews University Church. And he, in his message, he said that he read a book five years ago, which changed his life. And then he uh, brought out this book, the one that we have printed as a church and we are distributing steps to personal revival. I'm quoting his words. He said, uh, five years ago, uh, I read this book. It has changed my life. It has changed the way I live. It has changed the way I think. It has changed the way I preach. And it has changed the way I pray. We still have many copies of this in the pastor's room. I encourage all of you to take this book and read it. I also listened to three women pastor, women speaking. One was a theology graduate and two were biologists. And the messages were inspiring and heart touching. And I understood that some women have the gift of preaching and teaching. God has given it to them. But Satan's methods are to divide the community of believers into male and female so God's voice cannot be heard from one half of his saints. Women are encouraged to preach in our churches only three days in a year. Today, and I am sure that many of the women have the gift of teaching and preaching. As church members, we should encourage so that God's voice can be heard through all of his gifted servants. Today, I am very happy that Mrs. Uma Chanaya has been chosen by God to address the church. She has been a dedicated and inspiring teacher, headmistress, principal, women's ministries director, and she is an exemplary mother in Israel. I am sure all of you will agree with me on that. Even in her retired years, she continues to be proactive and dynamic. She continues to work for the Healthy Heart Program. I have known her and her family, her dear husband and her two lovely daughters for the past 35 years. And she is a dear friend to me as she is to many of you. I want to thank you, Mrs. Chanaya, for accepting my request. 
and may the Holy Spirit be poured out in double measure on you and the words you speak. Thank you. Now I hand over the time to Mrs. Chennaya. I want to thank Daya, uh, Mrs. Daya Dharmendra for graciously agreeing to translate. Happy Sabbath Church. I want to thank the Lord for the great opportunity given to me to share the word of God with you all. I want to thank Dr. Kala Prasad for the kind words. I do not know I am worthy for that, but I am a simple and humble God's servant. Nagurinchi Parche Vakal Palikinet Twenty, Doctor Kalagarki, Vandanal Chelistunanu. I want to thank all the ladies for the special song. It reminds me about the faith of our fathers, which we forget nowadays. Manchi Pat Parnet Twenty, Sangamalo Net Twenty, Stri Lander, Kwandanal Chelistunanu, Manatandralu, Ye Viswasa Naite, Walla Vemberin Chero. I want to thank Mrs. Sadaya Dharmendra for accepting to translate my message. Worldwide Church celebrating three special days for women. Prapancha Vaptanga, Strila Nimitum, Mood Pratyek Menetwanti Dinalni, Walum Jarpkuntu Naru. From nineteen hundred and seven till now, women are playing a major role in general conference. Pandam Nandala Yedo Samatranunchi, General Conference Advar Yamelo, Pratyek Menetwanti, Imahila Dinotsval Jarpkuntu Naru. Mrs. E. G. White is the first person started women ministries. White Magaru, Yokastril Parcheril Nam Praram Mincharu. After her death, till 1970, there was a, a period called Dark Age. Am Maradan Taravata Pandan under W. Samacharam Varku, Chik at Kalam Anukovachu. Because the activities of women ministries were hindered. Strail Parcheril Luapiwe Badai Kontakalanga. Then after 1970, Again, the activities of women ministries started. And they are continuing till now. I would like to remind you about the three special days of women ministries globally celebrating. The the first Sabbath of March is celebrated as International Women's Day. March lo Madati Sabbatni Antar Jatiya Mahila Dinotswanga Jarupkuntu Naru. The second Sabbath of June is celebrating as Women Emphasis Day. June lo Rendava Sabbatni Strila Sadikarata Dinotswanga Jarupkuntu Naru. And fourth Sabbath of August is celebrated as End It Now or and abuse prevention day. Nalgova Sabatu August Lova Che twenty Sabatuni. What is that day? Women. Uh, I forgot. End it now. Abuse prevention day. Strail me the Jerry twenty Daduni Api Vayali and eight twenty denotes Vanga Jarpuntu Naru. I'm sorry, I'm getting old, that's why I didn't remember correctly. <laughs> okay, today's uh, theme is. Heroines of faithfulness. Heroes prasangamsam namakamaina twenty viswasavanitalu. On hearing the word heroines and different meanings will come into our mind. Heroines, kada naiklu anagane, anakmena twenty nirvachana livabartunai. A heroine can be a celebrity. Kata naiki ante baga pram kimena twenty peru prakyatal ganchina twenty three ayundachu. Or maybe an actress. Amavaka uh, actress Ayundachu or some important person. Lapati Pramukimanitwanti Victi Ayundavachu. 
According to Cambridge Dictionary, Cambridge Nigantu Prakaram, a heroine is a woman who is admired for a very brave act or achieved something great. ఏ స్త్రీ అయితే ఘన కార్యాలని సాహస కార్యాలని సాధిస్తుందో ఆ స్త్రీని హీరోయిన్ లేక కథానాయిక అని పిలుస్తారు బట్ ద బిబ్లికల్ మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ హీరోయిన్ ఈజ్ ఎ విమెన్ ఆఫ్ ఫెయిత్ ఆర్ విమెన్ ఆఫ్ కరేజ్ పరిశుద్ధ గ్రంథము హీరోయిన్ అనేటువంటి మాటను ఏమని పిలుస్తుందంటే ధీరవనితలు లేక విశ్వాస వనితలు అని పిలుస్తూ ఉన్నది బైబుల్ ప్రజెంట్స్ మెనీ విమెన్ హూ ఆర్ వెల్ నోన్ ఫర్ దేర్ కరేజ్ అండ్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ బైబిల్లో అనేకమైనటువంటి స్త్రీలు ధైర్యమును మరియు విశ్వాసమును ప్రదర్శించినటువంటి వారి గురించి చెప్తూ ఉన్నది దే ఆర్ ద హీరోయిన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఏజెస్ వారు అనేక సంవత్సరాల నుంచి కూడా వాళ్ళని మనం విశ్వాసవనతలుగా పరిగణిస్తూ ఉన్నాము దే ఆర్ ఇన్స్పైరింగ్ అవర్ లైఫ్స్ త్రూ దేర్ మోడల్ లైఫ్ వారి యొక్క మాదిరికరమైనటువంటి జీవితాల ద్వారా మనకు ప్రోత్సాహాన్ని అందిస్తూ ఉన్నారు దే హెల్ప్డ్ మెనీ పీపుల్ టు ట్రావ్ ద పిల్గ్రమేజ్ టు హెవెన్ వారు పరలోక యాత్ర చేయడానికి అనేకమైనటువంటి వారికి మాదిరికరంగా ఉన్నారు ఐ వాంట్ మెన్షన్ ఫ్యూ విమెన్ మెన్షన్ ఇన్ ద బైబుల్ బైబిల్లో చెప్పబడినటువంటి కొందరు స్త్రీలను మీకు జ్ఞాపకం చేయాలనుకుంటున్నాను లైక్ దెబోరా ఎస్తేర్ ఆర్ హేనా షారా మేరీ అండ్ ద క్యాప్టివ్ మేడ్ ఎట్సెట్రా దెబోరా ఎస్తేరు శారా రూత్ మరియ లాంటి స్త్రీలు వీళ్ళలో ప్రాముఖ్యమైనటువంటి వారు అండ్ ఆల్సో సమ్ అదర్ విమెన్ హూ వి నో they are susan wesley uh, cory ten boom and uh, ellen g white etc susan wesley and etwant ama ellen white amma garu veer kontha mandi devunu koraku saakshulaga nilicharu they remained faithful till death vaari jeevithantham varaku kuda devuniki nammakasthuluga jeevincharu they inspired our lives from the 17th to 20th century పదిహేడవ శతాబ్దం నుంచి ఇరవయో శతాబ్దం వరకు వారి అనేక మంది జీవితాలను మార్చేటువంటి పరిచయాలు వారు జరిగించారు అండ్ ఆల్సో వీ ఫైండ్ సమ్ ఇన్ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ విమెన్ ఇన్ ద బైబుల్ బైబిల్లో అనేక మంది స్త్రీలు వాళ్ళకి పేరు ప్రఖ్యాతలు ఏమి లేవు కానీ వారు ప్రభు కోసం జీవించారు దేర్ నేమ్స్ వర్ మెన్షన్ ఇన్ వెరీ షార్ట్ వర్సెస్ బట్ దే హ్యావ్ గివెన్ a very exemplary life and inspire through their faithfulness to god kontha mandi streelu yokka perlu akkada akkada maatrame manaki kontha sepu kanipistayi kaani vaari jeevithallo chaala nammakamaina tvanti maadrikaramaina tvanti jeevithalu vaaru jeevincharu though they are insignificant but they are not hesitated to risk their lives to share god's word వారు పేరు ప్రఖ్యాతులు లేనటువంటి స్త్రీలు అయినప్పటికీ వారు ప్రాణాలకు తెగించి ప్రభువును వెంబడించినట్లుగా వారి గురించి చూస్తూ ఉంటాం సో దే ఆర్ అవర్ రోల్ మోడల్స్ ఎగ్జిబిటింగ్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ టు గాడ్ వారి యొక్క జీవితాలను మాదిరికరంగా తీసుకొని వారి అడుగుల జాడల్లో నడిచే విధంగా వారి జీవితాలు మన ముందు ఉంటాయి దే హ్యావ్ షోన్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్ ఒబీడియన్స్ టు ద లాడ్ దేవునికి ఎంతో నమ్మకమైనటువంటి విధేయతను వారు చూపించారు వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ వెన్ ద ఒబీడియన్స్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ కాన్ఫ్లిక్ట్స్ విత్ ద ఒబీడియన్స్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాన్ మనం దేవునికి విధేయత చూపించాలా లేకపోతే మనుషులకు విధేయత చూపించాలా అనేటువంటి సందిగ్ధం వచ్చినప్పుడు మెనీ టైమ్స్ వీ మే ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ దిస్ సిచ్యువేషన్ ఇలాంటి పరిస్థితులే మనకు కూడా వస్తూ ఉంటాయి వీ నో వాట్ ఈస్ రైట్ బట్ సర్కమ్స్టాన్సెస్ మేడ్ అస్ టు సపోర్ట్ అవర్ లిజన్ టు హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్స్ అసలు సరైనది ఏంటో మనకు తెలుసు కానీ పరిస్థితుల ప్రభావం వలన మనుషులకే మనం విధేయలమవుతూ ఉంటాం అండ్ వీ నో వెన్ వీ స్టాండ్ ఫర్ ద రైట్ వాట్ విల్ హ్యాపెన్ టు అస్ మనము మంచి కోసం నిలబడినప్పుడు ఏం జరుగుతుందో మనకు తెలుసు టుడే వీ విల్ లర్న్ సమ్ ప్రాక్టికల్ లెసన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ద హీరోయిన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ ఈ రోజున మనం నమ్మకమైనటువంటి విశ్వాస వనితల జీవితంలో నుంచి కొన్ని పాఠాలు నేర్చుకోబోతున్నాం ఐ హ్యావ్ సెలెక్టెడ్ ఫైవ్ విమెన్ హూ ఎగ్జిబిటెడ్ ఎక్స్ట్రాడినరీ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ కరేజ్ అండ్ లవ్ టువర్డ్స్ గాడ్ దేవుని ఎడల ధీరోధాత్తమైనటువంటి విశ్వాసాన్ని ప్రదర్శించినటువంటి ఐదుగురు వనితల గురించి నేను చెప్పాలనుకుంటూ ఉన్నాను ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు బిగిన్ మై మెసేజ్ విత్ టూ ఇన్సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ విమెన్ హూ ఆర్ మెన్షన్ ఇన్ ద బుక్ ఆఫ్ ఎగ్జోడస్ ఫస్ట్ చాప్టర్ వర్సెస్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ టు ట్వంటీ వన్ మొదటిగా నిర్గమాకాండంలో మొదటి అధ్యాయము పదిహేను పదహారు వచనాల్లో వ్రాయబడినటువంటి ఇద్దరు స్త్రీల గురించి చెప్పాలనుకుంటున్నాను ఆఫ్టర్ జోసెఫ్ డెత్ you new pharaoh came to rule the kingdom of egypt 
యోసేపు మరణం తర్వాత ఒక కొత్త ఫరో రాజు ఐగుప్త దేశాన్ని ఏలడం ప్రారంభించాడు హి వాస్ నాట్ అవేర్ ఆఫ్ ద గుడ్ డీడ్స్ ఆఫ్ జోసెఫ్ యోసేపు చేసినటువంటి మంచి పనుల గురించి ఈ ఫరో రాజుకు తెలియదు బట్ హీ నోటీస్ ద ఎనార్మస్ గ్రోత్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రోలైట్స్ కానీ ఇస్రాయేలు విస్తారంగా ప్రబలిపోతున్నారన్నటువంటి విషయం ఇతనికి తెలుసు ద కింగ్ వాస్ ఫియర్డ్ దట్ దీస్ పీపుల్ మే జాయిన్ విత్ ద ఎనిమీస్ ఈ రాజుగారు చాలా భయపడ్డాడు ఇస్రాయేలీల ప్రజలు శత్రువులతో కలిసి నన్ను ఓడిస్తారేమో అని సో హీ వాంటెడ్ టు కంట్రోల్ ద పాపులేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయెల్ ఇస్రాయిల్ జనాభాని అరికట్టాలని నిర్ణయించుకున్నాడు దెన్ హీ ఫోర్స్ దెమ్ ఇన్ టు ఏ క్రూయల్ అప్రషన్ కాబట్టి ఇస్రాయిల్ చేత కఠిన బానిసత్వం చేయడం ప్రారంభించాడు అండ్ టు హిస్ అమేజ్మెంట్ the more the israelites were suffered the more they multiplied israel in shrama pettina koladiga vallu vistarinchadam prarambhincharu he did not realize that god is with them pharaoh ki devudu israel pakshana unnadu anatuvanti vishayam teliyadu now i want to uh, turn your attention to the population control strategy what uh, pharaoh implemented ఫరో రాజు ఎలాంటి జనాభా నియంత్రణ ప్రణాళికను తీసుకుని వచ్చాడో దాని గురించి మనం కొంత తెలుసుకుందాం కింగ్ ఫారో న్యూ వెరీ వెల్ ద మెన్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయెల్ వర్ వెరీ టాలెంటెడ్ అండ్ వర్క్ మెన్ స్కిల్డ్ వర్క్ మెన్ ఇస్రాయిల్ల పురుషులు చాలా నైపుణ్యం కలిగినటువంటి వారు తలాంతలు కలిగినటువంటి వారని ఫరో రాజుకు తెలుసు హీ వాంటెడ్ టు యూస్ దెమ్ ఫర్ కన్స్ట్రక్టింగ్ బిల్డింగ్స్ ఇన్ ఈజిప్ట్ ఐగుప్త దేశంలో వారి చేత నిర్మాణాలు చేపట్టాలని తలంచాడు హీ అపాయింటెడ్ టాస్క్ మాస్టర్స్ వారి మీద కఠినమైనటువంటి సేవలు చేయించేటువంటి అధికారులను ఉంచాడు అండ్ హీ ఇంప్లిమెంటెడ్ హార్ష్ పనిష్మెంట్స్ ఓవర్ దెమ్ వారికి భయంకరమైనటువంటి శిక్షలు వారి మీద అమలు చేసేవాడు బట్ స్టిల్ ద మోర్ ద ఇజ్రోలైట్స్ వర్ అప్రెస్డ్ ద మోర్ దే వర్ మల్టీప్లై ఇస్రాయిల్ని అణిచివేసే కొలదిగా వారు అభివృద్ధి చెందడం ప్రారంభించారు అగైన్ ద కింగ్ implemented another punishment rajgaru maroka shiksha namal parichadu this punishment is a very severe punishment ee yokka shiksha chala bhayankaramaina atvanti di he made a cruel law to kill all the male babies of israel oka kroramaina chattanu teesukoni vachadu israel yokka maga shishulandarni champeyalani nirnayinchadu the king pharaoh went from oppression to open murder ఇప్పుడు అణిచివేతన ఆపివేసి ఇంకా వాళ్ళని హత్యలు చేయడం ప్రారంభించాడు ఇన్ ఎగ్జోడస్ చాప్టర్ వన్ థర్టీన్ ఫోర్టీన్ అండ్ సెవెంటీన్ వర్సెస్ షోస్ వెరీ క్లియర్లీ ఆల్ ద అటెంప్ట్స్ హీ మేడ్ టు కంట్రోల్ ద పీపుల్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయెల్ ఇస్రాయిల్ జనాభా నియంత్రణ కోసం ఫరో చేసినటువంటి పనుల గురించి నిర్గమాకాండం ఒకటో అధ్యాయం పదమూడు పద్నాలుగు పదిహేడు వచనాలను మనం చూస్తాం దెన్ ఫైనల్లీ ద కింగ్ wanted to involve two innocent women to control the birth rate of israel ipudu israel il yokka janaba ni arikattadaniki israel illo unnatuvanti iddara amayikamaina atuvanti streelanu pattukunnadu these two midwives do not know what kind of act they are going to implement on israel raju gar cheppina atuvanti maatalu ee mantra saanulaki ardham kaaledu In Exodus of chapter 1 15 and 16 verses reveal the king's cruel law Nirgama kandam 1st adhyayam 15 16 vachanallo rajgar yokka kroorathvanni manam chustam It was a grave responsibility was laid upon the shoulders of the midwives Ee yokka mantra saanul meeda pedda baadhyata unchabadindi And these two ladies are named by Shifra and Pua ఈ ఇద్దరు స్త్రీల పేర్లు షిఫ్రా పూయా వెన్ హీ కాల్ దీస్ మిడ్ వైవ్స్ అండ్ గేవ్ స్ట్రిక్ట్ వార్నింగ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ గివెన్ ఇన్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్ ఫస్ట్ చాప్టర్ వన్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ అండ్ సిక్స్టీన్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ సన్ దెన్ యూ షల్ కిల్ హిమ్ బట్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ డాటర్ దెన్ షీ షల్ లివ్ నిర్గమాకాండ ఒకటో అధ్యాయం పదహారో వచనము మీరు హెబ్రీ స్త్రీలకు మంత్రసాని పని చేయుచు వారిని కాన్పు పీటల మీద చూచినప్పుడు మగవాడైన ఎడల వాని చంపుడి ఆడదైన ఎడల దాన్ని బ్రతుకనీయడని వారితో చెప్పాను అకార్డింగ్ టు ఎల్ఎన్జీ వైట్ కొటేషన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద బుక్ ఆఫ్ పేట్రియాక్స్ అండ్ ప్రాఫెట్స్ పేజ్ నెంబర్ టూ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ఫార్టీ టూ పితరులు ప్రవక్తలు అనేటువంటి వైటమ్మ గారి పుస్తకంలో రెండు వందల నలభై రెండో పేజీలో ఈ విధంగా వ్రాశారు 
Saturn is the main culprit involved in making a cruel law through King Pharaoh. ఫరో ద్వారా సాతానుడే ఈ యొక్క పథకానికి రూపకల్పన చేశాడు అని ఆమె చెప్పారు ఇట్ ఇస్ రిటర్న్ సాటన్ వాజ్ ద మూవర్ ఇన్ దిస్ మ్యాటర్ హీ న్యూ దట్ ఏ డెలివరర్ వాజ్ టు బి రైజ్డ్ అప్ అమాంగ్ ద ఇజ్రాయిట్స్ అండ్ బై లీడింగ్ ద కింగ్ టు డిస్ట్రాయ్ దేర్ చిల్డ్రన్ హీ హోప్డ్ టు డిఫీట్ ద డివైన్ పర్పస్ సాతాను యొక్క ప్రణాళికకి రూపకర్త ఈ ఫరో కాబట్టి ఇస్రాయిల్ నుంచి ఒక విమోచకుడు వస్తాడని తెలిసినటువంటి సాతానుడు ఫరో రాజును ప్రేరేపించడం ద్వారా దేవుని యొక్క ఉద్దేశాన్ని ప్రణాళికల్ని నిరర్ధకం చేయాలనుకున్నాడని వైటమ్మ గారు రాశారు ద సీరియస్ అండ్ క్రూయల్ టాస్క్ గివెన్ టు ద మిడ్ వైఫ్స్ ఈ యొక్క మంత్రసానులకి చాలా క్రూరమైనటువంటి పని అప్పగించబడింది వై షిఫ్రా అండ్ పువా బోత్ ఆర్ సెలెక్టెడ్ బై ద కింగ్ ఎందుకు రాజుగారు ఈ షిఫ్రా పూయాలని ఎందుకున్నాడు maybe they are the leaders of the midwives in the country aa desamlo unna mantrasanulu andarki villu nayakulu yundavachu and maybe he trusted well with these two ladies andaru veerini nammakasthulani enchi undavachu he was sure that these ladies will implement his cruel law kabatti ina kruramaina tante aagranalaki tappakunda vidheyita chupistarani raju gari telusu whatever the case it might be these ladies were entrusted with a special assignment from the egyptian king aigupta raju oka pratyekamaina tanti baadhyatanu veer iruvarki appaginchi unnadu let us see how these ladies accomplished the king's order raju gari yokka shasanani ye vidhanga ee streelu amalu chesara manam chuddam before we could learn that first we will learn about the meanings of uh, shifra and puwa shifra puya anetanti perlaku ardham entante shifra means beauty shifra ante saundaryavati ani ardham puya means splendor or brightness puya ante shobhaya manam lagapothe kaanti mayam ani ardhanni istundi though the ladies were appointed to oppress the male children of israel israel yokka maga shishuvulni anichi veyadaniki vil erpaadu cheyabaddaru but god made them a shining stars for his glory and honor kaani devudu tana mahima kosamu ee streelanu prakashinchetuvanti nakshatralaga yerpaat cheskunnadu this midwives knew about god of israel ee yokka mantra saanuliki israel yokka devunu gurinchi baaga telusu and also they knew how cruel the king pharaoh is pharaoh raju enta krurudo kuda valaku telusu a spiritual battle was raging అక్కడ ఒక ఆత్మీయ పోరాటం అక్కడ జరుగుతూ ఉన్నది ఎట్ ద టైమ్ గాడ్ నీడెడ్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్ పీపుల్ టు క్యారీ అవుట్ హిస్ మినిస్ట్రీ అలాంటి సమయంలో ఆత్మీయ పోరాటంలో ఆయన యొక్క సేవను ముందుకు తీసుకెళ్లేటువంటి యోధురాండ్రు ప్రభుకు అవసరమై ఉన్నారు హీ వాంట్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్ వారియర్స్ టు ఫైట్ అగేన్స్ట్ ద సేటన్ అండ్ ఆల్సో ఎట్ ద సేమ్ టైమ్ ద పీపుల్ షుడ్ ఆనర్ అండ్ be glorified and be faithful to him satanuku vetrekanga poradu vententi yodulu prabhu kosam kavali ani prabhu chustu unnadu these two midwives may not be knowing about the sixth commandment of god aarava aagna ee iddra mantra saanulaku teliyadu thou shall not kill narahatya cheyakodu anetivanti aagna shipra puyalaku teliyagopovachu do without knowing god's commandment దేవుని యొక్క ఆజ్ఞ వీరికి తెలియకపోయినప్పటికీ కూడా వి హ్యావ్ టు రిమంబర్ దే ఆర్ విమెన్ అండ్ మదర్స్ టూ వారు స్త్రీలు మరియు తల్లులై ఉన్నారు ఎ విమెన్ కెన్ నాట్ టేక్ అప్ సచ్ ఎ క్రూయల్ యాక్ట్ ఒక స్త్రీ ముందుకు వచ్చి మగ బిడ్డలను చంపడం అన్నటువంటి పని చేయలేకపోవచ్చు విమెన్ ఈజ్ ఆల్వేస్ నోన్ ఫర్ సాక్రిఫైస్ స్త్రీలు త్యాగానికి ప్రతీకలుగా నిలుస్తారు వి హ్యావ్ బీన్ నోటీసింగ్ how many sacrifices our mothers made for us tallulu man kosam elanti tyagalu chesara man andariki telusu and how many times you sacrificed for your children oka talliga nuvu kuda nee biddala kosam enno tyagalu chesi untavu so we can imagine how much great battle they have experienced in their mind ee iddra streelu ento porataanni vaallu manasulu anubhavisthu unnaru but these two midwives took up the challenge ఈ ఇద్దరు మంత్రసానులు ఒక పెద్ద సవాల్ని ఎదుర్కొంటూ ఉన్నారు ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎవిడెంట్ దట్ ద కింగ్ మైట్ బి వెరీ ష్యూర్ మై లా ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు బి ఇంప్లిమెంటెడ్ నౌ ఐ యామ్ ఎట్ పీస్ బికాస్ ద పాపులేషన్ ఆఫ్ 
Israel will be controlled by the two appointed midwives. ఇప్పుడు రాజుగారు చాలా సంతోషంగా ఉన్నాడు ఎందుకంటే నా చట్టాన్ని ఈ స్త్రీలు ఇద్దరు కూడా అమలు చేయబోతూ ఉన్నారు ఇస్రాయిల్ జనాభాన్ని షిఫ్రా పుయాలు అరికట్టేస్తారని చెప్పి చాలా సంతోషంగా ఉన్నాడు ఫరో రాజు దెర్ ఇస్ అ రీజన్ ఫర్ ద కింగ్స్ కాన్ఫిడెన్స్ రాజుగారి యొక్క నమ్మకత్వానికి ఒక కారణం ఉన్నది ద పీపుల్ ఆఫ్ ఈజిప్షియన్స్ ది బిలీవ్ ద కింగ్ ఫారో ఈజ్ ద ఇన్కార్నేషన్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఐగుప్తీలు అందరు ఏమని తలుస్తారంటే ఫరో రాజు గారే దైవానికి ప్రతీక అని చెప్పి వాళ్ళు తలుస్తారు ది ఆల్వేస్ కన్సిడర్డ్ హిమ్ యాజ్ అ సన్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ద ఫరో రాజు అంటే దేవుని కుమారుడు అని వాళ్ళు భావిస్తూ ఉంటారు సిన్స్ మిడ్ వైఫ్స్ ఆల్సో బిలీవ్ దట్ హీస్ అ సన్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ సో హీ థాట్ ష్యూర్లీ దే విల్ ఇంప్లిమెంట్ మై ఆర్డర్ మంత్రసాన్లు కూడా నన్ను దేవుని కుమారుడుగా అంగీకరిస్తారు కాబట్టి తప్పకుండా నేను చెప్పినటువంటి పనిని వాళ్ళు విధేయులవుతారని చెప్పి రాజుగారు అనుకున్నాడు అండ్ ఆల్సో దీస్ మిడ్ వైఫ్స్ మేబీ get some benefits from the king rajgaru veliki bahumanalu kuda isthadu ayin cheppinatuvanti pani ni veeru cheste they may receive promotions gifts and they may be getting popularity in the royal court valaki padonnati dorukutundi ante kaakunda manchi peru kuda rajgari aasthanamlo labistundi valaki but at the same time if they disobey to god's law there is a death penalty వారు రాజాజ్ఞని సిరసాహ వహించకపోతే వాళ్ళకి మరణం కూడా సంప్రమిస్తుంది ద మిడ్ వైఫ్స్ హావ్ నో చాయిస్ ఎక్సెప్ట్ టు ఇంప్లిమెంట్ ద కింగ్స్ ఆర్డర్ షిఫ్రా పూయాలకి రాజాజ్ఞని పాటించడం తప్ప మరొక మార్గం కనబడలేదు ఇన్ స్పైట్ ఆఫ్ నోయింగ్ ద డేంజర్ ఆఫ్ డిజర్బింగ్ కింగ్ ఫారో ఫరో రాజు కాని వాళ్ళు వ్యతిరేకత చూపిస్తే దే హావ్ మెనీ రీజన్స్ టు బే గాడ్ వాళ్ళు దేవునికి విధేయులై ఉండాలని చెప్పి వాళ్ళు నిర్ణయించుకున్నారు షిఫ్రా అండ్ పువా దే బోత్ ఒబేడ్ టు గాడ్ అండ్ షోర్ దేర్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ టు గాడ్ షిఫ్రా పూయాలు దేవునికి విధేయులై వారి నమ్మకత్వాన్ని దేవుని ఎడల చూపించారు అవరికి టెక్స్ట్ యాక్ట్స్ ఫైవ్ ట్వంటీ నైన్ సేస్ వీ ఆర్ట్ టు ఒబే గాడ్ రాదర్ దాన్ మెన్ మన మూల వాక్యంలో చూసుకున్నట్లుగా అపోస్తుల కార్యములు ఐదో ఆదాయం ఇరవై తొమ్మిదో వచనంలో మనుషులకు కాదు దేవునికే మేము లోబడవలేను కదా దే డిసైడెడ్ టు ఫాలో గాడ్స్ ప్లాన్ అండ్ దే డిసైడెడ్ నాట్ టు కిల్ ద మేల్ చిల్డ్రన్ మేల్ ఇన్ఫాన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయెల్ షిఫ్రా పూయాలు దేవునికి లోబడ్డానికి నిర్ణయించుకున్నారు let us learn the practical lessons of courage faithfulness and love for god through the action of shifra and pua shifra puyala jeevithamlo unnatuvanti goppa vishayalni udhi kala samayamlo konni nerchukundam these lessons will help us to fulfill god given appointment to each one of us మన జీవితాల్లో ప్రభు ఏ ఉద్దేశాన్ని కలిగి ఉన్నాడో ఆ ఉద్దేశాన్ని నెరవేర్చడానికి ఈ స్త్రీల జీవితంలో మనం నేర్చుకునేటువంటి పాఠాలు మనకు సహాయం చేస్తాయి సో ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు రిక్వెస్ట్ మిస్సెస్ దయా టు రీడ్ ఎగ్జోడాస్ వన్ సెవెంటీన్ నిర్గమాకాండం ఒకటో అధ్యాయం పదిహేడో వచనము అయితే ఆ మంత్రసాన్లు దేవునికి భయపడి ఐగుప్త రాజు తమకు ఆజ్ఞాపించినట్లు చేయక మగ పిల్లలను బ్రతుకనీయగా Thirtieth chapter, fifteenth verse, a wonderful message is given to us. Vithiyo Padeshkana Muppayo Adhyayam Padiheno Vachinamilo Vakka Manchi Vakya Ni Manan Choostam. Please read them. Choodumu, Nenu Jeevamunu, Melunu, Maranamunu, Keedunu, Nii Yedutta Vunchi Yunnanu. Here God is showing us two different parts. Ikkada Devudu Rendu Yempikal Ni Manam Undu Unchedu. the first path is leading us to life and goodness vakati jeevamunakunu manchithananiki velle atavanti margam manam chustam the second path is leading to death and evil rendavadi marana margamunu keedunu manam chustam the two midwives have chosen the path of good and life ee yokka mantrasanulu manchini jeevamunu preminchi danni vembadincharu Proverbs 9:10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Samitala grandamu 9th adhyayam 10th vachanam cheptundi Yehova yandali bhaya bhaktulu gnanamunaku moolamu. What happens when we fear to God? Manam devuniki bhaya padinappudu jarige tivanti mail ento. Last night uh, during the vesper service uh, Mrs. Pallavi shared 
so many Bible texts about the fear of the Lord. I am not going to repeat them again, but I would like to say a brief points out of that. రాత్రి వెస్పర్స్ జరిగేటువంటి సమయంలో సహోదరి పల్లవి గారు దేవుని గూర్చినటువంటి భయమును గూర్చినటువంటి అనేకమైనటువంటి బైబుల్ వచనాలు మనకు చూపించున్నారు ద ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ ద గాడ్ ఈజ్ ద ఓన్లీ మోటివేటింగ్ ఫ్యాక్టర్ దట్ కెన్ మేక్ సమ్ వన్ రిజెక్ట్ ఈ విల్ డిస్పైట్ ఆఫ్ కాన్సిక్వెన్సెస్ దేవుని యొక్క భయము మనము కీడును విసర్జించి మంచిని చేసేలాగా చేస్తుంది ద ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ లీడ్స్ వన్ టు చూస్ గ్లోరిఫై గాడ్ even with the cost of sacrifice and suffering devuni yokka bayamu mana jeevithallo adi thyagam cheyalasi vachina sare thyagapoorthanga devuni ni mahima parichay laga manalu nadipistundi the fear of god is the only reason why one can say no to wrong and yes to what is right devuni yokka bayam manakunte తప్పుని విడిచిపెట్టి మంచిని చేయడానికి మనం నిర్ణయించుకుంటాము ద ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఈజ్ ఏ వర్చ్యూ షైనింగ్ ఫోర్త్ ఐ మిస్ ద డార్క్నెస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ దేవుని భయం మనకుంటే చీకటిలో కూడా మనం వెలుగువలి ప్రకాశిస్తాం టు ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ మీన్స్ టు ఎక్నాలెడ్జ్ గాడ్ యాజ్ ఎ సుప్రీమ్ బీయింగ్ దేవుని యొక్క భయము కలిగినటువంటి వారం అయితే దేవుని యొక్క సార్వభౌమ అధికారాన్ని మన జీవితాల్లో అంగీకరిస్తాం ద ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాన్ మేక్స్ మ్యాన్ a victim of the circumstances devuni yokka bhayam manaku lekapothe jeevithamlo chetavanti parinamalaki manam baanisalaga maaripotam but the fear of god brings rest and peace in the face of a danger devuni yokka bhayam manakunte pramadalanu mana chuttumutti unnappudikini kuda dhairyanga munduku konasagutam the second lesson from the lives of two midwives is ఈ మంత్రసానుల జీవితంలో మనం నేర్చుకునేటువంటి రెండో పాఠం ఏంటంటే హ్యాండిల్ ద సిచ్యువేషన్ విత్ విజ్డమ్ దేవుని యొక్క జ్ఞానముతో షిఫ్రా పోయాలు పరిస్థితులను నిర్వహించారు యాజ్ వి ఆల్్రెడీ ల ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్ ఇస్ ద బిగినింగ్ ఆఫ్ విజ్డమ్ యెహోవా యందుల భయభక్తులు జ్ఞానమునకు మూలమని మనం చూసినాము ఈస్ విజ్డమ్ అవైలబుల్ ఫర్ us దేవుని యొక్క జ్ఞానం మనం కలిగి ఉన్నామా ప్రోవర్బ్స్ 2 6 సేస్ ఫర్ ద లార్డ్ గివ్స్ విజ్డమ్ సామెతల గ్రంథము రెండవ అధ్యాయం ఆరో వచనము ఏమని చెప్తూ ఉన్నదంటే యహోవాయే జ్ఞానమిచ్చువాడు అని చూస్తాం ఇఫ్ ఎనీ వన్ నీడ్స్ విజిడమ్ వీ నీడ్ టు ఆస్క్ గాడ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు షో అవర్ ఫియర్నెస్ టు గాడ్ ఎవరికైనా జ్ఞానం కొదువుగా ఉన్నట్లయితే దేవుని దగ్గరకు వెళ్ళాలి దేవుని యొక్క భయాన్ని మనం కలిగి ఉండాలి యాజ్ డాటర్స్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఇఫ్ వీ సీక్ అండ్ ఆనర్ గాడ్ షూర్లీ హీ విల్ బ్లెస్ అస్ విత్ విజిడమ్ దేవుని యొక్క కుమార్తెలుగా మనం దేవుని యొక్క జ్ఞానాన్ని కోరుకున్నట్లయితే తప్పకుండా ప్రభు తన యొక్క జ్ఞానాన్ని మనకి అనుగ్రహించి దీవిస్తాడు వి కెన్ ఫైండ్ ఎ ప్రామిస్ ఇన్ సామ్స్ థర్టీ టూ చాప్టర్ వర్స్ ఎయిట్ కీర్తన గ్రంథం ముప్పై రెండో కీర్తన ఎనిమిదో వచనంలో ఐ విల్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్ట్ యూ అండ్ టీచ్ యూ ద వే విచ్ యూ షుడ్ గో ఐ విల్ గైడ్ యూ విత్ మై ఐ కీర్తనలు ముప్పై రెండవ కీర్తన ఎనిమిదో వచనం నీకు ఉపదేశము చేసేదను నీవు నడవవలసిన మార్గములను నీకు బోధించేదను నీ మీద దృష్టి ఉంచి నీకు ఆలోచన చెప్పేదను విత్ గాడ్ గివెన్ విజ్డమ్ ద టూ మిడ్ వైవ్స్ దే హ్యావ్ టేకెన్ ఎ వైజ్ డెసిషన్ దేవుడిచ్చినటువంటి జ్ఞానంతో చాలా ఆలోచనాపూర్తమైనటువంటి నిర్ణయాన్ని వాళ్ళు చేపట్టారు దే వాంట్ టు అవాయిడ్ కిల్లింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇన్నోసెంట్ మేల్ బేబీస్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయల్ ఇస్రాయల్ సంబంధించిన అమాయకులైనటువంటి మగ శిశువులను చంపకుండా వెనకడుగు వేశారు దే వాంటెడ్ టు డిలే వెన్ ఎవర్ దే రిసీవ్ ఏ కాల్ ఫ్రమ్ ద హోమ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయల్ ఫర్ ద డెలివరీ దే పర్పస్లీ డిలేడ్ ఇస్రాయల్ స్త్రీలు ఎవరైనా సరే కాన్పు సమయానికి వారిని రమ్మని పిలిచినప్పుడు కావాలనే వాళ్ళు ఆలస్యంగా అక్కడికి చేరుకునేటువంటి వారు so by the time they reach home the ladies are delivered and they do not have any opportunity to kill the male babies shifra puyalu alasinga vaalla illaku veladam valna appudukune israeli hebri streelu prasavinche varu aa vidhanga vaallu maga shishuvulni champakunda aapi vesaru the third lesson from their lives is they choose to obey god rather than man shifra puyal nunchi moodo paata manam em nechukuntam ante manushulaku kaadu gaani devuniki bayapaddaniki teermaninchukunnaru we ought to obey god rather than man manam manushulaku kaadu gaani devunike bayapadali in the book of councils for the church mrs eg white writes this way 
he who has god's law written in the heart will obey god rather than men and will sooner disobey all men than deviate in the least from the commandment of god god's people taught by the inspiration of a truth and led by a good conscience to live by every word of god will take his law written in their hearts as the only authority which they can acknowledge or consent to obey the wisdom and authority of the divine law are supreme సంఘానికి హితోపదేశములు అనేటువంటి ఎలెన్ వైటమ్మ గారి పుస్తకంలో ఈ విధంగా వ్రాశారు వారి మనసులలో నా ధర్మ విధులను ఉంచెదను వారి హృదయముల మీద దానిని వ్రాసదను నేను వారికి దేవుడినై ఉందును వారు నాకు ప్రజలై ఉందురు ధర్మశాస్త్రము ఎవరి హృదయములో వ్రాయబడుతుందో ఆ వ్యక్తి మనుషులకు కాక దేవునికి లోబడి ఉంటాడు సత్యావేశము చే బోధ పొంది ప్రతి మాట చొప్పున జీవించడానికి మంచి మనస్సాక్షి నడుపుదలలో ఉన్న దైవ ప్రజలు తమ హృదయాలలో వ్రాయబడ్డ ధర్మశాస్త్ర అధికారాన్ని ఒప్పుకొని దాన్ని గైకొనడానికి అంగీకరిస్తారు ధర్మశాస్త్రము ఇచ్చే జ్ఞానము అధికారము ఉత్కృష్టమైనవి అని వ్రాశారు శిఫ్రాపూయ అనేటువంటి మంత్ర సాన్లు ఇద్దరు కూడా దేవునికి భయపడ్డానికి తీర్మానించుకున్నారు కానీ మనుషులకు భయపడలేదు they understood the value of life jeevitham yokka viluva variki baaga telusu and they wanted to save all the male babies of israelites israel ilku unnatvanti maga shishuvulu andanni kuda varu bratakani icharu the fourth lesson comes to us is they should they stand they stood against injustice and defended the helpless ones షిఫ్రా పూయాల జీవితంలో నుంచి మనం నేర్చుకునేటువంటి నాలుగో పాఠం ఏంటంటే వారు అన్యాయాన్ని ఎదిరించి నిస్సహాయులకు సహాయం చేయడానికి తీర్మానించుకున్నారు ప్రోవర్బ్స్ థర్టీ వన్ ఎయిట్ రివీల్స్ స్పీక్ అప్ ఫర్ దోస్ హూ కెన్ నాట్ స్పీక్ ఫర్ దెమ్సెల్స్ డిఫెండ్ ద రైట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ దోస్ హూ హ్యావ్ నథింగ్ సామెతల గ్రంథం ముప్పై ఒకటో అధ్యాయం ఎనిమిదో వచ్చిన ఏం చెప్తుందంటే మూగ వారికి దిక్కులేని వారికి అందరికీ న్యాయము జరుగునట్లు నీ నోరు తెరువుము it is an act of injustice to kill the life of another vakkal pranam theedam annadi chaala anyayamaina atuvanti vishayam shifra and poor decided to stand against the injustice shifra puyalaki puyale iddaru kuda anyayaniki eduradi nilicharu they refused to kill the male babies maga shishuvulu champadaniki ninge vaallu trunikarincharu instead of killing they want to defend them అమాయకులైనటువంటి చిన్న బిడ్డలను చంపివేయడానికి బదులుగా వారి ప్రాణాలను కాపాడారు ద లైక్ టు ప్రిజర్వ్ ద లైవ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇజ్రాయెల్ ఇస్రాయిల్ యొక్క చిన్న బిడ్డల యొక్క జీవితాలను వాళ్ళని భద్రంగా కాపాడారు పీపుల్ హూ ఎవర్ లవ్ గాడ్ అండ్ షో దేర్ అట్మోస్ట్ ఒబీడియన్స్ టు గాడ్ దే మస్ట్ స్టాండ్ అప్ ఫర్ ద ఇన్జస్టిస్ దేవుని ప్రేమించాము అని చెప్పుకునేటువంటి ప్రతి ఒక్కరు కూడా దేవుని యొక్క ఆజ్ఞలకు లోబడుతూ అన్యాయాన్ని ఎదిరించేటువంటి వారుగా ఉండాలి యాజ్ సెవెంత్ డే అడ్వెంటిస్ట్ వీ ఆల్ నీడ్ టు స్టాండ్ అగేన్స్ట్ ద ఇన్జస్టిస్ అండ్ వీ నీడ్ టు డిఫెండ్ ద హెల్ప్లెస్ వన్స్ సెవెంత్ డే అడ్వెంటిస్ సంఘానికి చెందినటువంటి వారంగా మనం అన్యాయాన్ని ఎదిరించి నిస్సహాయకులకు సహాయం చేసేటువంటి వారంగా మనం ఉండాలి the fifth lesson that comes to us is their faithfulness saved the entire race of israelites shifra puyala jeevithalo manam nerchukunnatvanti aido paatam entante veeru devuniki bayapadi israel jaati antatni kuda kaapadaru god's plan is to raise up a deliverer from the slavery of egypt aigupthu bani sattvalo unnatvanti prajallo nunchi oka vimochakunni levanathali annadi prabhu yokka pranalika we have to praise the lord for keeping shifrant poor at the right time at the right place sarainaatvanti samayamulo sarainaatvanti pradeshamulo devudu shifra puyalnu unchinanduku manandram prabhu ni enta kana stutinchali moses was chosen as a leader to deliver the people of israel israel ni vidipinchataniki devudu moshe ani vimochakadaga ennukoni unnadu he was saved by these two midwives shifra puyal anetvanti mantra sanlu moshe ni kaapadaru they did not kill the female children as a result moses was rescued mantra sanlaina veeriddaru maga shishuvulu champaledu kabatti moshe pranam kaapadabadindi their illustration reveals how god has chosen insignificant women to fulfill his promise 
దేవుడు తన యొక్క వాగ్దానాలను నెరవేర్చడానికి ఈ స్త్రీలని ఇరువురిని ఏ విధంగా వాడుకున్నాడు ఈ సందర్భంలో మనం చూస్తాం కెన్ గాడ్ కౌంట్ ఆన్ యూ అండ్ మీ దేవుడు ఈ విధంగానే ఈ విధమైనటువంటి నమ్మకత్వాన్ని నీ ఎడలా నా ఎడలా పరిగణలోనికి తీసుకొనగలడా వెన్ హీ నీడెడ్ ఎ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్ వారియర్స్ కెన్ వీ బి సెలెక్టెడ్ దేవునికి నమ్మకమైనటువంటి యోధులు కావాలి అని కోరుకున్నప్పుడు నువ్వు నేను ఆయనకి నమ్మకంగా అందుబాటులో ఉండగలమా ఫ్రమ్ ద బుక్ ఆఫ్ అడ్వంటిస్ట్ హోమ్ ఈజీ వైట్ రైట్స్ ఇన్ పేజ్ నెంబర్ ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ విమెన్ ఇన్ హర్ హోమ్ doing the simple duties of life that must be done can and should exhibit faithfulness obedience and love as sincere as angels in their sphere conformity to the will of god makes any work honorable that must be done adventist grahom anetvanti pustakamlo vaitama garu streela gurinchi ee vidhanga vrasaru తన ఇంటిలో ఉన్నటువంటి స్త్రీ జీవితంలో చేయవలసిన సాధారణ విధులను నిర్వహిస్తూ వారి పరిధిలో దేవదూతల వలె నిజాయితీ విధేయత మరియు ప్రేమను ప్రదర్శించగలదు మరియు ప్రదర్శించాలి దేవుని చిత్తానికి అనుగుణంగా ఏ పనినైనా గౌరవప్రదంగా చేయాలి అని వ్రాశారు ద లాస్ట్ లెసన్ దట్ కమ్స్ టు అస్ గాడ్ రివార్డెడ్ దేర్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ షిఫ్ర పూయాల జీవితంలో మనం నేర్చుకోబోతున్నటువంటి ఆఖర పాఠం ఏంటంటే వారిద్దరు యొక్క నమ్మకత్వానికి దేవుడు ప్రతిఫలం దయచేశాడు ఎగ్జోడస్ చాప్టర్ వన్ ట్వంటీ అండ్ ట్వంటీ వన్ వర్సెస్ రివీల్స్ దెర్ ఫోర్ గాడ్ డెల్ట్ వెల్ విత్ ద మిడ్ వైవ్స్ అండ్ ద పీపుల్ మల్టీప్లైడ్ అండ్ గ్రూ వెరీ మైటీ అండ్ సో ఇట్ వాజ్ బికాస్ ద మిడ్ వైవ్స్ ఫియర్డ్ గాడ్ దట్ హీ ప్రొవైడెడ్ హౌస్ హోల్డ్స్ ఫర్ దెమ్ నిర్గమాకాండం ఒకటో అధ్యాయం ఇరవై ఇరవై ఒకటి వచనాల్లో షిఫ్రా పూయాల గురించి ఈ విధంగా వ్రాయబడి ఉన్నది దేవుడు ఆ మంత్రసానులకు మేలు చేసెను ఆ జనము విస్తరించి మిక్కిలి ప్రబలెను ఆ మంత్రసానులు దేవునికి భయపడినందున ఆయన వారికి వంశాభివృద్ధి కలుగ చేసెను గాడ్స్ కైండ్నెస్ వాజ్ ఎక్స్టెండెడ్ టు ద ఫ్యామిలీస్ ఆఫ్ షిఫ్రా అండ్ పూయా షిఫ్రా పూయాల కుటుంబాలకు దేవుని యొక్క దయ దొరికింది దే బికమ్ లివింగ్ విట్నెసెస్ of god's goodness devunu yokka manchi thananiki sajeeva saakshuluga ee streeladra nilicharu in galatians 6th chapter verses 9 to 10 verses says galati patrika 6th adhyayamu 9th padivachanallo and let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith galati patrika 6th adhyayam 9th vachana 9th padivachanamulu manamu melu cheyita endu visaka kayundamu manamu alayaka melu chesithimeni tagina kaalamandu panta kotumu kabatti manaku samayam dorikina koladi andari edalanu visheshamuga viswasa grahamunaku cherina vari edalanu melu cheyidamu the heroines of faithfulness they lived amongst us they left a spiritual inheritance to each one of us namakanga jeevinchinatvanti ee iddra streelu goppa aatmiya varasatvanni vaari venaka vidichi pettaru and i would like to share the experiences of three more women oka muggru streelu yokka aatmiya anubhavalanu meetho panchukovalanu aashisthu unnanu carolina ten boom ఒక ఆమె పేరు కెరోలినా టెన్ భూమ్ సారీ కర్నోలియా టెన్ భూమ్ కొర్నేలియా టెన్ భూమ్ హర్ ఫ్యామిలీ సేవ్డ్ ఎయిట్ హండ్రెడ్ జ్యూయిష్ నేషనల్స్ వీరి కుటుంబము ఎనిమిది వందల మంది యూదులను రక్షించారు షీ ఈస్ ఫాండ్లీ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ కోరీ ఆమెను అందరూ కోరీ అని పిలుస్తూ ఉంటారు షీ వాజ్ బోర్న్ ఇన్ నెదర్లాండ్స్ ఇన్ ఏప్రిల్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ ఎయిటీన్ నైంటీ టూ పద్దెనిమిది వందల తొంభై రెండవ సంవత్సరంలో ఏప్రిల్లో ఆమె నెదర్లాండ్ దేశంలో జన్మించింది జ్యూరింగ్ ద వరల్డ్ వార్ వన్ జర్మనీ వాజ్ డిఫీటెడ్ మొదటి ప్రపంచ యుద్ధంలో జర్మనీ ఓడించబడింది ద నాజీ అథారిటీస్ బిలీవ్డ్ దట్ జర్మనీస్ డిఫీట్ వాజ్ డ్యూ టు ద నాన్ కోఆపరేషన్ ఆఫ్ జ్యూయిష్ పీపుల్ నాజీ ప్రభుత్వం వారు ఏమని తలంచారంటే యూదులు మనకు సహకరించలేదు కాబట్టి మనం యుద్ధంలో ఓడిపోయామని తలంచారు జ్యూరింగ్ దోస్ డేస్ the jewish people used to organize most of the banks stock markets and other businesses in the country 
వాణిజ్య వ్యాపారాలన్నీ కూడా ఆ రోజుల్లో యూదులతో నడుపబడుతూ ఉండే ద వర్ వెరీ స్ట్రాంగ్ ఇన్ ఫైనాన్సెస్ వారు ఆర్థికంగా చాలా అభివృద్ధి చెందినటువంటి వారుగా యూదులు ఉన్నారు ఆల్మోస్ట్ ద కంట్రీ వాజ్ రూల్డ్ అండ్ సపోర్టెడ్ బై జూస్ ఆ యొక్క దేశమంతా కూడా యూదుల యొక్క అధికారం ద్వారానే వాళ్ళు సహకారం అందిస్తూ ఉండేటువంటి వారు డ్యూరింగ్ ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ సెకండ్ వరల్డ్ వార్ రెండో ప్రపంచ యుద్ధ కాలంలో ద నాజీ అథారిటీస్ దే వాంటెడ్ టు టేక్ రివెంజ్ ఆన్ దెమ్ నాజీ పార్టీ వారు ఏం తలంచారంటే యూదుల మీద ప్రతీకారం తీర్చుకోవాలని నిర్ణయించుకున్నారు they started persecuting jews during the second world war rendo prapanch yuddha kalamallo yudulanu vocha kota koyadam modala pettaru the persecution is very severe and we cannot see them we cannot tolerate to see their persecution aa yokka himsanu aa vocha kotanu manam maatallo varninchalemu there was a mass killing akada samuhika ga hatyalu vallu chesaru they gathered more than 100 people in a small room then made them to start to death without food and air oka chinna gadilo 100 mandi daaka prajalni bandhinchi vaaru uupiraadaka chanipoya laaga chesaru and they used gas chambers to kill them vishavayulni vaalla meedaki vadili vaallu chanipo uupiraadaka chanipoya laaga chesaru at that time god has chosen few dutch people to save the communion of jews అలాంటి సమయంలో దేవుడు కొంతమంది డచ్చి వారిని యూదులను కాపాడడానికి ఏర్పాటు చేసుకున్నాడు కోరిస్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఈజ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద డచ్ ఫ్యామిలీ టు రిస్క్ ద దేర్ లైవ్స్ అండ్ ట్రై టు సేవ్ ఫ్యూ పీపుల్ ఆఫ్ బిలాంగ్స్ టు జూయిష్ నేషన్ కోరి కుటుంబస్తులు డచ్చి ప్రాంతం నుంచి వచ్చినటువంటి వారు దేవుని బిడ్డలైనటువంటి యూదులను కాపాడాలని తీర్మానించుకున్నారు ద కోరిస్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఈజ్ టు రన్ ఎ వాచ్ షాప్ దే change the watch shop into a rescue home kori kutumbaniki gadiyaralu tayaru chese atuvanti dukanam unnadi danini varu yudulni daache atuvanti pradeshanga march vesaru you can see in the screen how she made rooms to accommodate more jewish people from the hands of nazi authorities nazi adhikaralu nunchi yudulni kaapaddaniki aamu yokka gruhanni ఏ విధంగా చిన్న చిన్న గదులుగా మార్చివేసిందో అక్కడ చూపిస్తున్నటువంటి పటాల్లో మనం చూడవచ్చు షీ మేడ్ ద వార్డ్ వార్డ్ రోబ్ క్లోజ్ రేట్ అండ్ బిహైండ్ హర్ బెడ్రూమ్ ఎ ఫాల్స్ వాల్ అండ్ అండర్ ద స్టెయిర్ కేస్ ఆమె తన యొక్క పడక గదిలో కొన్ని కృత్రిమైనటువంటి గోడలను నిర్మించి ప్రజలను దాచడానికి కొన్ని రహస్య గదులను ఏర్పాటు చేసింది ఈచ్ ప్లేస్ కెన్ అకామిడేట్ ఓన్లీ సిక్స్ టు సెవెన్ పీపుల్ ఇన్ స్టాండింగ్ పొజిషన్ ఆమె చిన్న చిన్న గదులు బీరువాలా కట్టి ఒక్కొక్క బీరువా లాంటి ప్రదేశంలో ఆరుగురు మాత్రమే మాట్లాడకుండా కదలకుండా నిలబడి ఉండేలాగా ఆ పెట్టి వారిని కాపాడింది అండ్ అలార్మ్ వాజ్ అరేంజ్డ్ ఎట్ ద స్టెయిర్ కేస్ కొన్ని గదులు మెట్ల కింద కట్టింది వెన్ ద సస్పెక్టెడ్ సమ్ డేంజర్ ఇస్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యాపెన్ ఇమ్మీడియట్లీ ద సిగ్నల్ విల్ బి గివెన్ వాళ్ళకు ప్రమాదం పొంచి ఉంది అనుకున్నప్పుడు వారికి ఒక గుర్తును ఆమె ఇచ్చేది immediately all the refugees gather into the rescue places with their belongings pramadam ponchi undi ani aama oka signal vaalaki ivvagane vaallandaru kuda jagrataga daakune tivanti vaallu till the danger gets over they have to stand motionless akada pramadam toligi poye varaku kuda vaallu kadalakunda medalakunda alage nilabadi undali at that time satan used one dutch man to stop the rescue operation ilante samayamulo oka dachi vyaktilo satanu duri veelaku chestunatvanti sahayam cheyavadakunda chesadu on february 28 1944 one dutch man informed the german police that kori family is providing shelter for jewish people ఒక డచ్ పోలీస్ వెళ్ళి జర్మనీ అధికారికి చెప్పాడు కోరి కుటుంబం యూదులను కాపాడుతూ ఉన్నది అని చెప్పి as a result kori her father brothers or sisters all were arrested ee vidhanga cheppadam valana a prabhutvam varu germany prabhutvam varu kori ni ami tandri ni ami yokka sahodaralu sahodari landanu kuda jail lo pettaru god acknowledged their faithfulness to him devudu kaani devudu vaari yokka namakatvaniki sakshi ga unnadu but usually who ever arrested when giving shelter to the jewish people immediately they will be killed yudul kevaraina aashrayam kalpiste vallu ventane champi vesevaru but here they were not killed kaani 
కోరి కుటుంబం చంపివేయబడలేదు బట్ హర్ ఫాదర్ డైడ్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెజెంట్ డ్యూ టు ఓల్డ్ ఏజ్ వృద్ధాప్య కారణంగా కోరి యొక్క తండ్రి జైల్లో మరణించాడు వైల్ షీ వాస్ ఇన్ ద జైల్ షీ రోట్ ఎ బుక్ టైటిల్ బై ద హైడింగ్ ప్లేస్ కోరి జైల్లో ఉండి తన ఖాళీ సమయంలో దాగడు స్థలము అనేటువంటి పుస్తకాన్ని వ్రాసింది షీ డిస్క్రైబ్డ్ ఆల్ హర్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్సెస్ ఇన్ దట్ బుక్ ఆమె యొక్క అనుభవాలన్నిటిని కూడా ఆ పుస్తకంలో క్రోడీకరించింది in 1944 maybe in the month of december they all were released without undergoing any harm or any torture 1944 samvatsaram december lo inga mare shramalu lekunda vallu vidudal cheyabaddaru meanwhile a new government was formed and there was a religious liberty akkada kotta prabhutvam vachindi variki mata swatantryam dorikindi After releasing from the jail she started a worldwide ministry and helped many people to know the love of God. ఆమె చరసాల నుంచి విడుదల వందిన తర్వాత ప్రపంచవ్యాప్తంగా ఆమె ప్రయాణాలు చేస్తూ దేవుని యొక్క ప్రేమను చాటి చెప్పింది. In 1983 April 15 she died peacefully in God's service. 1983వ సంవత్సరం ఏప్రిల్ నెలలో ఆమె ప్రశాంతంగా ప్రభునందుని ధరించింది. her birth date and death date is the same ame puttana dinam marana dinam kuda oke roju vastayi in the history of germany she remained as one of the heroines of faithfulness germany charitralo ame devuniki nammakamaina atuvanti vyaktiga ame gurinchi likinchabadindi then another story really while i was preparing i have undergone with so much pressure and burden neni vakyanni siddham chesatappudu గొప్ప భారంతో నేను ఈ వాక్యాన్ని ఎంపిక చేసుకున్నాను దిస్ ఈజ్ ద ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ స్టోరీ ఆఫ్ ఎ వీడో ఒక విధవరాల గురించినటువంటి ఉదంతం సింఫోరోజా ఈజ్ ఎ విడో షీ లివ్డ్ ఇన్ రోమ్ జూరింగ్ ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ ఎంపరర్ ట్రాజన్ చక్రవర్తి ట్రాజన్ రోమా పట్టణాన్ని పరిపాలిస్తున్నటువంటి సమయంలో సింఫోరోసా అనేటువంటి ఒక స్త్రీ జీవిస్తూ ఉన్నది ఇట్ హ్యాపెండ్ ఇన్ ఏడీ వన్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ఎయిట్ క్రీస్తు శకం నూట ఎనిమిదవ సంవత్సరం అది సింఫోరోసా అండ్ హర్ సెవెన్ సన్స్ బికేమ్ క్రిస్టియన్స్ సింఫోరోసాకి ఏడు మంది కుమారులు వారందరూ కూడా ప్రభువుని రక్షకుడిగా అంగీకరించారు జ్యూరింగ్ దట్ టైమ్ దెర్ వాజ్ ఏ ఆర్డర్ all the citizens of రోమ్ షుడ్ వర్షిప్ ద ఇమేజ్ ఆఫ్ రోమన్ గాడ్ హెర్క్యూలస్ హెర్క్యూలస్ అనేటువంటి రోమా దేవుణ్ణి అందరూ పూజించాలి అని ఒక శాసనం చేయబడింది ఆ దేశంలో ద ఎంపరర్ ట్రాజన్ కేమ్ టు నో దట్ సింఫోరోసా అండ్ హర్ సన్స్ ఆర్ నాట్ ఒబేయింగ్ ద ఇమేజ్ ఆర్ ఐడల్ ఆఫ్ హెర్క్యూలస్ చక్రవర్తి ట్రాజన్ గారికి తెలిసింది సింఫోరోసా ఆమె యొక్క ఏడుగురు కుమారులు హెర్క్యూలస్ దేవుడిని పూజించడం లేదని హి వాజ్ వెరీ ఫ్యూరియస్ అండ్ కాల్డ్ సింఫోరోసా అండ్ హర్ సన్స్ టు ద కోర్ట్ రాజు గారు ఉగ్రుడై సింఫోరసాని ఆమె యొక్క ఏడుగురు కుమారుని పిలిపించాడు ఎ ఫైనల్ వార్నింగ్ వాజ్ గివెన్ టు దెమ్ ఆఖరిగా హెచ్చరిక వాళ్ళకి జారీ చేశాడు టు చూస్ టు సర్వ్ జీసస్ క్రైస్ట్ ఆర్ టు డై మీరు యేసుక్రీస్తుని అంగీకరించినట్లయితే మీరు మరణిస్తారు సింఫోరోసా అండ్ హర్ సెవెన్ సన్స్ ద స్టర్డ్ ఫోర్మ్లీ అండ్ సెడ్ నో వీ విల్ నాట్ వర్షిప్ అండ్ బౌ డౌన్ టు ద idol of hercules we remain faithful to jesus christ simphora samaya oka eduguru kumarulu em chepparante maranamaina parvaledu kani mem yesu christ ni vidichi pettamu devunne vembadistamu hercules ki mem poojinchamani chepparu with a great anger the king ordered them to whip simphorosa till her death raju garu atyugrudu em chepparante koradal tho ivunu shikshinchamani aagna pinchadu they whipped her she fainted then they pulled her and took her to the temple of hercules and they hanged her by using her hair to the ceiling simphorosa ni bhaga kottar koradal tho ante kaakunda avani eechukuntu aa hercules aalaya prangana ni teeskoni velli aame juttu ni aalaya sikarani kattesi aamanu veralaadesaru but still they are not satisfied with the cruel treatment ఇంత క్రూరంగా హింసించినప్పటికీ వాళ్ళ కోపం చల్లారలేదు లేటర్ ఆన్ దే టైడ్ ఎ బిగ్ స్టోన్ టు హర్ నెక్ అండ్ దే త్రూ హర్ ఇన్ టు ద రివర్ టైబర్ వాళ్ళ యొక్క కోపం చల్లారక ఆమెను ఆలయ శిఖరం దగ్గర నుంచి కిందకు దించి ఆమె మెడకు పెద్ద రాయి కట్టి టైబర్ అనేటువంటి నదిలోకి ఆమె శరీరాన్ని విసిరివేశారు 
they did not leave the small ch- children ame kunna tvandi eduguru kumarulu kuda vallu vidichi petaledu they tied all these seven sons to the seven posts ame yokka eduguru kumarulni pedda edu koyyalu kattesaru they dragged them by ropes tying to the pulleys thalato vallani kattuku katti ee roadlu venta eecharu they were not satisfied till their legs and arms were dislocated all over the body was bleeding like anything vallu aa koyyalaku katti vesi baruvulu tagilinchi vaala dehalanu velaadesi vaala keellu sthanam tappe laaga chesi valani himsincharu they tortured them brutally varni kotti bhayankaramaina tvandi himsaku guri chesaru but still the children have life inka vaallu pranalatho batike unnaru eduguru kuda still they refuse to worship హెర్క్యులస్ గాడ్ కానీ వాళ్ళు హెర్క్యులస్ అనేటువంటి దేవుడికి మొక్కమని చెప్పారు దెన్ దే ఆర్డర్ ద సోల్జర్స్ కిల్ దెమ్ బై స్వోర్డ్స్ రాజుగారు సైనికులకు ఏమన్నా ఆజ్ఞాపించాడు అంటే ఖడ్గాలతో పొడిచి వీళ్ళని చంపివేయమని చెప్పాడు బట్ ద డిడ్ నాట్ కిల్ దెమ్ ఎట్ వన్స్ ఒక్కసారే వాళ్ళని చంపివేయలేదు కానీ దే మేడ్ స్లిట్ టు ద త్రోట్ ఆఫ్ వన్ సన్ వాళ్ళు ఒక కుమారుని యొక్క గొంతుని కోశారు and they pierced the sword through the heart gundalo nunchi kadganni doorcharu they made one son into two pieces oka kumarini rendu mukkalaga nariki vesaru so in what all the brutal ways they can torture they did enta krooratvam chuinchagalaro anta krooranga valani himsincharu all these seven children they lost their lives showing faithfulness to god devuniki nammakatvanni pradarshisthu eduguru kumarulu kuda hatha sakshulaga chanipoyaru by knowing the severe persecution of simparosa and her seven sons simparosa ame yokka kumarulu ye vidhanga prabhu kosamu hatha sakshulu ayyaro telusukunnatvanti varu the governor governor of bethinia he wanted to intervene on behalf of christians of that roman country అక్కడ గవర్నర్గా ఉన్నటువంటి బితీనియా గవర్నరు క్రైస్తవుల పక్షం వహించి ఏదన్నా క్రైస్తవులకు సాయం చేద్దామని నిర్ణయించుకున్నాడు మెనీ ఫిలాసఫర్స్ అండ్ ఆఫీసర్స్ అండ్ ఇంటలెక్ట్స్ దే వర్ ఇంప్రెస్డ్ బై సీయింగ్ ద ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ టు గాడ్ అక్కడ ఉన్నటువంటి అనేక మంది తత్వవేత్తలు అధికారులు వీరి యొక్క ఉదంతాన్ని విని చెలించిపోయి వారు కూడా ప్రభు అయిన యేసినందు విశ్వాసం ఉంచారు ద సాక్రిఫైస్ ఆఫ్ సింఫరోసా అండ్ హర్ సెవెన్ సన్స్ moved many people and made many to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior simphorosa ame yokka eduguru kumar kumarulu yokka udantanni telusukunnatvanta aneka mandi prajalu yesuni tama swarakshakuduga angeekarinchi prabhu biddalaga mari poyaru and another mother's sacrifice is also illustrated here maroka thalli gurinchinatvanti chinna udantanni panchukuntanu vipya perpetus was a well educated daughter of a wealthy man of north america uttar america prantamulo vibia perpetua anetvanti vyakti oka danikamaina atvanti tandri ki janminchindi she is known for her beauty and intelligence ame chaala andamaina atvanti di gnanam kaligina atvanti stri she was the first women convert as a christian in north africa uttar africa prantamulo yesu prabhu ni angikrinchina atvanti modati stri ime she was in her early 20s ama 20 samasrala vayasu kaliginatvanti ama that time the roman emperor septimus severus banned conversions to christianity akkada natvanti chakravarti evvaru kuda christavuluga maaradaniki veelledani shasanam chesadu vibia has two choices vibia mundu rendu empikalu unnai either denounce christ and survive yesu christ ni visarjinchi pranalato bratakadam okati or be true to the lord and be put to death leda nammakanga yesu ni vembadistu maradinchadam it was not a very easy thing for her to choose deni ni empika cheskovalo aa nirnayam anta telikaina atuvanti vishayam kaadu because she has an infant child amuku oka pasibedde unnadu and also an elderly father urdudaina atuvanti tandri kuda unnadu and father pleaded her to denounce christ to survive tandri perpetua ni pratimaladu yesu christ ni vidichi pettamma ani but she refused to listen to her father tandri maata nirakrinchindi soldiers arrested her along with five other christians 
సైనికులు వచ్చి ఈమెను ఈమెతో పాటు ఉన్న మరో ఐదుగురిని కూడా చరసాలకు తీసుకుని వెళ్ళారు Among them, one lady is there who is her servant by name Felicita. Aaydu guru lo vaka vekti, ee parpechi vaka dhagara panchesthu natu vaanti pani manishi Felicita. Felicita is a pregnant lady. Parpechi vaka dhagara pani manishi ka panchesthu natu vaanti Felicita aasamimala garbavati. According to that country, there was a law, the pregnant women should not be killed. Aa desi mula vaka chattam anadhi garbavati ni champa kodudu vaani. So the soldiers waited till her delivery. Kabati ama prasam varaku go saini kulu bechi va unnaru. On the day before her trial, Vibhya's father again pleaded her to denounce Jesus Christ. Tirpuk mundu rozu parpechi va thandri akar ko vachi amne brati maledi Yesu Christ ne vodile si pranam to bati ko unda mani. But she replied with a stern concern. మిగతా వారిని కూడా చంపివేయడాన్ని తీసుకుని వెళ్ళారు దేర్ ద ఎంపరర్ ఎంప్లాయిడ్ అ గ్లాడియేటర్ టు కిల్ దమ్ ఈ వీరందరిని చంపడానికి రాజుగారు ఒక యోధుని ఎంపిక చేసుకున్నాడు హీ అప్రోచ్ దమ్ విత్ అ స్వర్డ్ వారి దగ్గరికి ఆ యోధుడు ఒక కత్తిని తీసుకొని వచ్చాడు బట్ ద గ్లాడియేటర్ హస్ అ సీన్ అన్షేకబుల్ ఫేత్ ఇన్ దేర్ ఐస్ వాళ్ళ కళ్ళల్లో ఉన్నటువంటి అచంచలమైనటువంటి విశ్వాసాన్ని చూసి ఆ యోధుడు చాలా చెలించిపోయాడు he was unable to kill them by using a sword aaya chethilo unnatvanti kaggaanni doosi varini champadaniki chaala bhay paddadu his hands started shaking aaya chethilu vanakadam prarambhinchayi at that time vibhya held the hand of the gladiator and slit her throat by her own hand aa samayamlo parpechiva ayyo ayodhudu yokka chethini aame lakkoni tana gontu meeda atani chethini pettukoni tana gontunu koskundi all these people left a legacy how to be faithful to god till death veer yokka vishwasam akkada unnatu vanti vaaru andaru kuda gamanisthu unnaru their lives caused a positive influence in the lives of many men and women aa desamloni anekamainatuvanti stree purushula meeda ee yokka jeevithalu chala goppa prabhavanni choopinchayi shifra and pure they were mentioned in a short message short verses but their faithfulness moved each one of us how to stand faithful for the lord shifra puyal yokka udantam bible lo kaasep maatrame kanipistundi kaani devuniki vishwasamainatuvanti nammakamainatuvanti jeevithalu ela jeevinchalo aa yokka goppa saakshuluga vaalliddaru nilicharu let us review what we have learned today ee roju vaari jeevithalu manam em paathalu nerchukunnamo manam chuddam The fear of God is the most important virtue. మన జీవితాల్లో దేవుని యొక్క దేవుని యొక్క భయాన్ని కలిగి ఉండడం అనేది గొప్ప నైతికమైనటువంటి సుగుణం. God grants us wisdom when it is needed to tackle the situation. కష్ట పరిస్థితులను మనం అధిగమించేటువంటి జ్ఞానాన్ని ప్రభు మనకు అనుగ్రహిస్తాడు. We always have a choice to obey God rather than Satan and his agents. దేవునికి లోబడాలా లేకపోతే సాతానికి వాని యొక్క అనుచరులకు లోబడాలా అనేటువంటి తీర్మానం చేసుకొని ఎంపిక చేసుకునేటువంటి అవకాశం మన చేతుల్లోనే ఉన్నది టు స్టాండ్ అప్ అగేన్స్ట్ ఇన్జస్టిస్ అండ్ టు డిఫెండ్ ద హెల్ప్ ప్లస్ అన్యాయాన్ని ఎదిరించి నిస్సహాయులకు మనం సహాయం చేయాలి అనేటువంటి పాఠాన్ని నేర్చుకొని ఉన్నాం టు రిమైన్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్ ఇన్ ఒబీడియన్స్ టు గాడ్ దేవునికి నమ్మకంగా విధేయులుగా మనం జీవించాలనేటువంటి మరో పాఠాన్ని నేర్చుకున్నాము గాడ్ రివార్డ్స్ అవర్ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ నమ్మకంగా జీవించిన ప్రతి ఒక్కరికి కూడా దేవుడు బహుమానాలు దయచేస్తాడు దీస్ సింపుల్ లెసన్స్ స్ట్రెంగ్త్ అన్ అవర్ స్పిరిచువల్ లైఫ్ మనం నేర్చుకున్నటువంటి ఈ సామాన్యమైనటువంటి పాఠాలు మన యొక్క ఆత్మీయ జీవితాలను మెరుగుపరుస్తాయి లెట్ అస్ ఎగ్జామిన్ అవర్ సెల్స్ ఈ ఉదయ కాల సమయంలో మనల్ని మనం పరీక్షించుకుందాం డు ఐ హావ్ ద ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ హీరోయిన్స్ ఎగ్జిబిటెడ్ నమ్మకత్వం కలిగినటువంటి ఈ యొక్క విశ్వాసవనతల యొక్క జీవితాన్ని నేను పోలి ఉన్నానా గాడ్ ఇస్ కాలింగ్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ అస్ దేవుడు మనలో ప్రతి ఒక్కొక్కరిని పిలుస్తూ ఉన్నాడు హీ వాంట్స్ అస్ టు బీ లైక్ షిఫ్రా అండ్ పువా మనందరం ఒక్కొక్కరు మీ షిఫ్రా పూయాల వలే ఉండాలని ప్రభు కోరుకుంటూ ఉన్నాడు కోరి అండ్ సింపరోసా అండ్ విబియా కోరి వలే సింపరోసా వలే పర్పెచ్యు వలే వలే మనం ఉండాలని దేవుడు కోరుకుంటూ ఉన్నాడు ఆర్ యు ఆర్ రెడీ టు స్టాండ్ అగేన్స్ట్ ద ఈవిల్ కీడుకు దూరంగా ఉండడానికి నువ్వు నిర్ణయించుకుంటావా we are living in the last days manam aakar dinallo jeevisthu unnam we are no the sunday law is going to be imposed very shortly sunday la aadivarapu chattam tvaralo raanai unnadi what would be our faith manu yokka vishwasam emai unnadi 
This is the time to stand for the Lord and choose what is right. ఏది మంచిదో దాన్ని ఎంపిక చేసుకొని దేవునికి సాక్షులుగా నిలబడాల్సినటువంటి సమయం ఆసన్నమైంది లెట్ అస్ మేక్ ఎ రైట్ డెసిషన్ టు చూస్ గాడ్ యాజ్ అవర్ పర్సనల్ సేవియర్ అండ్ లెట్ అస్ బీ ఫెయిత్ఫుల్ అండ్ ఒబే అండ్ లవ్ గాడ్ సరైనటువంటి నిర్ణయాలు తీసుకొని ప్రభు అయినటువంటి రక్షకుడిని మన యొక్క రక్షకుడిగా అంగీకరించి ఆయన ఆజ్ఞలకు మనం లోబడాలి మే ద లాడ్ కంటిన్యూ టు బ్లెస్ అస్ అండ్ హెల్ప్ అస్ టు లివ్ ఎన్ ఎగ్జాంప్లరీ లైఫ్ దేవుడు మనందరికీ సహాయం చేసి మాదిరికరమైనటువంటి జీవితాలు జీవించడానికి ప్రభు మనందరికీ సహాయం చేయనుగాక ఇన్ క్లోజింగ్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు రిక్వెస్ట్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ రిపీట్ అలాంగ్ విత్ మీ ఎ షార్ట్ ప్రేయర్ ఆఫ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద హీరోయిన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫెయిత్ఫుల్నెస్ మనందరము ఆఖరిలో నిలబడి ఒక ప్రార్థనని నా వెనక చెప్పాలని నేను కోరుతూ ఉన్నాను షల్ బి రైస్ మనందరం నిలబడదాం ఒక క్షణం ప్లీజ్ రిపీట్ అలాంగ్ విత్ మీ నా వెనకాల ఈ ప్రార్థన మీరు అందరూ కూడా చెప్పండి father father teach me your ways of righteousness teach me your ways of righteousness and cause your spirit and cause your spirit to open my eyes to open my eyes that i may understand your will that i may understand your will for my life for my life and go in jesus name and go in jesus name amen amen thank you god bless us all me andariki vandanalu prabhu manallandani deevinchina gaaka we thank mrs uma chennaya for the inspiring message <clears throat> to close our divine service let's all stand and sing hymn number 626 
Let's all close our eyes for prayer. <coughs> our grace, heavenly Father, once again, Lord, thank you for bringing us to praise thee, Lord. We praise and thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. In a special way, we are thankful to you for the role of a woman in the church. Help us to be a shining light to the world. And also we thank Mrs. Uma Chennai for the inspiring message. We thank you for using each one of us to glorify his holy name. May this message inspire us to grow spiritually. You have blessed us and protected us throughout this summer. Give us the Sabbath blessings to each one of us as we depart from this house of prayer. I pray in the holy name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive it us as you forget it us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit abide all the women of the church. Father, we thank you for their contribution and dedication to the church. Loving God you have, may you give them the more blessings to be a partner with you to proclaim the end time message, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.